1-800-284-9760. In the news, on Thursday, Missouri Governor Jane Nixon announced the Missouri State Highway Patrol will handle policing of Ferguson, Missouri, the site of large protests and police violence since a police officer shot 18-year-old Mike Brown to death on Saturday. News Channel 5 also reported the FBI would be taking over the investigation into the shooting. The FBI will handle all operations, protests, and other activities. Local police will operate under the direction of the FBI. Governor Nixon said the police should release the name of the officer accused of shooting Brown. Nixon also stated that Ferguson resembled a war zone. On Thursday, press freedom organizations held a press conference in support of New York Times reporter James Risen. The U.S. Department of Justice is attempting to compel Risen to testify against former CIA employee Jeffrey Sterling, who they accuse of leaking classified information to Risen. Risen is the author of the 2006 book, State of War, which describes the CIA's efforts to interrupt the Iranian nuclear program. The groups presented a petition of more than 100,000 signatures asking the Justice Department to quit their pursuit of Risen. If Risen does not testify against Sterling, he will face jail time and fines. The conference was organized by the Committee to Protect Journalists, the Freedom of the Press Foundation, the Government Accountability Project, the Reporters Committee for Freedom of the Press, and Reporters Without Borders. An eBay subsidiary, Braintree Payments, is exploring Bitcoin acceptance. The Wall Street Journal reports, Braintree Payments is part of PayPal, which is owned by eBay. PayPal executives have reportedly been meeting with Coinbase, a Bitcoin merchant processor, about accepting Bitcoin on the Braintree network. At this time, no agreements have been made. eBay CEO John Donahoe is hinted at the potential for... We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish a TV show where I travel across this great nation, eating pork in every one of our 50 states. Join me on my cross-country odyssey as I make our forefathers proud, reveling in life, liberty, and the pursuit of pork. You can really taste the cooked pork. This stuff is fantastic. I'm a big salt fan. Let's pork! We're tasting prime pork dishes in every state in the Union, and I couldn't be more excited for this once-in-a-lifetime tour. You're going to be right here with me, seeing everything I do and watching every pork I taste. I'm Jim Haggerty. You know me as the host of Today Now, but I've also eaten in a ton of restaurants. Now I'm heading out on the road. My mission, find the best pork our country has to offer. Watch Jim Haggerty's Porkin' Across America at youtube.com slash the onion. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, yet another live Saturday edition where we will take your calls about anything you want to discuss. I have to say that Ferguson, Missouri continues to be on my plate of things of interest. Your calls are certainly welcome on whatever is on yours. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And Mark, if you get a chance, uh, we'll also be talking about a disturbing proposal. Yeah, I've got it. In Wired Magazine. Yep. About something that doesn't sound really Wired related. Wired's about the internet technology. This is about restricting population. Yes. So uh, if we get a chance, we'll hit that. Your call's welcome. The toll free number is 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. We also have Skype. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. We'll give you the update on Ferguson in a moment. Let's open up with AC right out the gate, uh, listening in. Ohio. AC, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. Yeah, first off, before I get into the story I want to talk about, I want to say I, uh, last night I got done listening to uh, that uh, after show you had with James Wood, and I got to admit that was some pretty funny stuff. It was very amusing. Thanks. Uh, you're talking about one of our shows earlier this week. I think it was the Thursday night uh, after show. But anyway, what, was, uh, what did you want to comment on tonight, please? Well, Okay, so per, have you guys heard of amend, Amendment 2 in Florida that will uh, help legalize medical marijuana? Is this the one that's only restricted to, like, uh, oil, like cannabis oil or something like that? Um, I'm not sure, but but apparently there's this uh, Amendment 2 that's, that's appearing on the Florida ballot in November that if it, if it, gets, if it makes it in, it will legalize medical marijuana in Florida. But anyway, there's, all, there's an anti-marijuana group in Florida who are making claims that, and this is funny, legalizing cannabis for medical purposes could lead to date rapes. 
Wow, that's pretty ridiculous. I guess that's as yeah. uh, you know, they have to get pretty desperate when they're trying to attack against the anti-prohibition crowd because the you know the idea of legalizing drugs, especially cannabis, is, this is just for medical me- is a, cannabis, right? Is a damn good idea, and uh, the idea that medical cannabis is going to lead to date rapes is seems like it will be completely uh, without any kind of merit or evidence whatsoever. It's absolutely absurd. Well, somehow in Florida, the um, the medical marijuana issue has become. Um, partisanized. It's, you know, the Democrats want it and the Republicans don't. Is that right? And it's very strange. There's a powerful attorney, um, I can't remember his name, but Morgan, I think is his last name. And he, you know, he's, his his shtick is Morgan calling in Gilbert for, for the, the people. people. Yeah, <laughs> right? <I remember> that. <laughs> you know, I mean, he just sounds Democratic, uh-huh. right? <laughs> and somehow or another, it's been like, you know, this powerful lawyer, and he's a powerful lawyer in, law- in this Florida. This is the kind of attorney, uh, you, know, you and I are originally from the sun coast of Florida, which yep. is just south of Tampa. And this guy advertises across the state. This is the kind of attorney who has the back page of the phone book yeah. <laughs> with his face on the back of it. On, in, in every phone yeah. book across yeah. the state. Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, and he so it's his support essentially has partisanized the the issue. Hmm. It may never have gotten through without his support, though. So I've got to say, I believe that in the, uh, the, the, the battle to make people more free, that in, on med- specifically about medical marijuana, that when you have these people that need medical marijuana, specific types of cancer, um, other conditions that medical marijuana is very helpful for, these are the these are the wounded on the battlefield. Let's get them off the battlefield, yeah. um, and then you can start talking about medical marijuana and that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, and if the claim excuse is, me, uh, recreational marijuana. Well, in this case, it's medical in Florida, right? That they're proposing. Yes, but I'm, if, then you can talk about right. recreational. If the if the claim is that medical cannabis is going to lead to date rape, then let's talk to the people who presumably would be victims of that date rape. Let's talk to uh, women. I mean, I guess some guys could be date raped as well, but let's talk to some of those folks and see how they feel about it because uh, I think that a lot of people are ready for this. This is a, a, a thing that is certainly a, a, a it's certainly something that young people are looking at and saying, wow, these laws still exist. Laws against marijuana are still there, and we're in the 21st century. Yeah, it's time to move move ahead on this. So, AC, was there any other uh, you know, highlights or lowlights, if you will, from the, the anti-cannabis campaign down there in Florida? Oh, yeah. I wanted to uh, just share quick one of their uh, advertisements. This group is called No On Two, and they recently posted on Facebook asking, will the face of date rate look like a cookie? And in the ad, a man and woman are portrayed hugging with an arrow pointing to a photoshopped cannabis cookie in the man's back with the man's back pocket. And I'm wow. like, okay, this is <laughs> it's hilarious. Does ridiculous. anyone take that seriously? I mean, there must be people well, who, uh, who Florida is chuck full of geriatrics yeah. and they get out and they vote. So do but they take they it seriously? Pot in these the 30s? people a lot of these people have never smoked marijuana. I'm sorry to tell you, but we're not talking about sixty year olds here. We're talking about eighty year olds. <laughs> <laughs> now cookies are wet. You know what the old story about uh, Sarasota Florida? It is. Everybody's parents live in Sarasota, and their parents, and their live, parents in live in Venice. Venice. Thanks, AC, for the call tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Now, maybe you're in Florida. And Their redneck you know, uncle lives in Bradenton. You know a little bit more about this group. He said the group is called No on Two. So I imagine we can pull up a website from these folks and find all kinds of ridiculous claims. There's just no shortage. You know, the prohibitionists... There's no shortage of uh, just out, absolutely outlandish claims. I remember that one of the classic ones is that you'll grow breasts if you're a man if you smoke cannabis. The old uh, then there's the other claim that no wait it's masturbation that grows hair on your palms right that's, that's not cannabis. All right, <laughs> we don't want to mix our myths here. Let's go to David in Columbia. You're on Free Talk Live. That's Columbia, South Carolina. Hey David. Hi there. How are you guys doing today? Good. Good. Are you listening on WQXL down there? Ah uh, yes. All right. Uh, fantastic. On the point. Uh huh. Go ahead. Um, what I wanted to address, I, I've only heard and mentioned one time regarding the situation in uh, Ferguson, and that is uh, the implication that the officer involved with the shooting actually drove away uh, in, uh, I guess, with part of the uh, crime scene, if you will. Okay. And, so uh, you're saying there's a claim that that happened and and it didn't happen, or what? No, there's a caller on, on some show made reference to the fact or the implication that the police officer that shot Mr. Brown actually drove away uh, in the vehicle 
where a part of the crime, if you will, took place. Mm-hmm. The, his actual patrol car. Hmm. I I haven't heard it, uh, but you know, I mean, the, obviously, obviously, there wasn't any big concern uh, as far as this police officer goes. When police are investigating police, they tend to get the, um, you know, the the treatment. You know what I mean? Exactly. And I'm wondering uh, if it will be known as to whether or not it's common practice for them to have had uh, uh, cam- uh, dash- dashboard cams or whatever you call those things. You mean the police themselves? Anything- Yes. I've heard rumor yes. that there is a dashboard cam and that there is video, but it obviously has not yet been released. That's just, you know, hearsay. I don't know whether that's true, but it's just what I've heard. Anything else you want to share tonight, yeah. David? Yeah. I, um, regarding the situation, I, for some reason, I just find it hard to uh, have any more any confidence or, or faith in anything that comes out of that particular police department, uh, the city police department. I just... Uh, they, they had an opportunity to uh, be upstanding, and then when they revealed this video yesterday at the time that they did it, that caused me to believe that they have no intention. Yeah, of surprise, surprise. The police circle the wagons when uh, they're under when one of theirs is under attack, and they protect one another quite frequently. David, thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from thanks. you. And, and I think a lot of people are having their eyes opened to the police state by this Ferguson issue. At least that's some of the feedback that uh, that I've been hearing is that, you know, some of this uh, Bearcat, MRAP, these armored tank vehicles coming out, troops in the streets wearing camouflage, holding machine guns. I mean, yeah, we I, I understand it happened after the Boston bombing, but it, when it happens now in different areas of the country, certainly more people are going to key into it. And so people are paying attention, at least some people, and they're seeing how scary this is out there. It's scary on both sides. I mean, you have violent, pro- you know, the protests aren't all peaceful. There's violent protests. Stores are getting looted. Right. Well, set apparently on fire, it's, fire. It, it's, uh, it kicked up again last yeah, night. Yeah. That's the latest in this story. In fact, I've got a piece here from uh, both Fox News and Yahoo. Let's see. Also, STL Today, which, of course, that's St. Louis. There has been a state of emergency declared and a curfew has been imposed. You know, if you ever wondered whether you're a free individual or not, wait until the government imposes a curfew, and then you'll find out that you really are just a surf on a plantation. Can't leave your house after a certain time of night. We'll give you more detail here in moments. 855 450 free. Maybe they'll give you a hall pass though. You remember what it was like in grade school? Well it's just like it's just like that now, just writ large. Uh, you can take control here. Share your thoughts on this live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live. 855 450 free. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Wake up and smell the freedom. One of the easiest things you can do to help Liberty is to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to help keep them drone-proof. You can set up your home computer to download and share Freedom Fiends archives over BitTorrent. You can even set up scheduling so it only shares while you're asleep or at work. Put your unused computing power to work and help keep the Freedom Fiends around well into the future. Simply go to freedomfiends.com and click on the Torrent Club link and learn how to torrent and share Freedom Fiends archives. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 
Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 357 you can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It is the live Saturday edition of the program. We invite you to take control of the airwaves here at 855-450 Free. Ferguson, uh, certainly hot on the news and certainly a big issue to me. It's, It's putting the police state on display for a lot of people to see who might not have realized just how far things have gone. I mean, yeah, the the Bearcats and the MRAPs, these armored personnel carrier vehicles, these have been handed out like candy by the federal government to police departments as small as our very own Keene, New Hampshire, with a population of 25,000. I think over 300 of these were handed out, and that was two years ago. It's probably closer to 500 now. I'm speculating on that one, but I know as of 2012, when Keene got theirs, it was uh, 300 nationwide. And the military tools continue to pour into the hands of the police They're only going to use it against you and me. We'll talk about the curfew coming up in Ferguson. That's been uh, put out there for tonight. Need focus? Are you feeling fatigued? Are you trying to get that extra edge when it counts? You can look into modafinil from modup.net. Studies show that one in five students are using this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so that you can get things done. Businessmen around the world continue to talk about how Modafinil from ModUp.net is making the difference in their work, giving them the critical edge that they need. They provide the highest premium Modafinil with the highest potency so that you can enjoy significant results. This is why they're the number one sponsor of Reddit's third-party nootropic testing project. Now, remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio program, and ModUp.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if your local prescription requirements and laws uh, apply. Um, Free Talk Live and ModUp aren't going to do that. (laughs) So ModUp.net is a supporter of the Bitcoin community, and you can order from ModUp.net with Bitcoin and get a 33% discount. And make it uh, the deal even sweeter, use code FTL, and you can get 10 free tablets with your order. So use that code FTL when you order from ModUp.net. Dot net. Ian, we actually had a, a listener who ordered this, and you said that they had great results. Yep, that's what I've heard. Let's go uh, to your phone calls and thoughts, and we'll talk to Patrick, listening in Panama City, to Talk Radio 101. Hey, Patrick. Yes, sir. Uh, I'd like to leave an unbiased opinion, and I'll leave the air. I Googled and uh, researched that street uh, Michael uh, Brown was uh, shot on, 
It's a 35 mile an hour zone, 60 feet wide, with 36 inch wide handicap accessible sidewalks on both sides. Okay. And the other thing is, is that uh, Michael Brown was not a teenager. He was an 18 year old with a high school diploma. Uh, That's not a teenager. 18 year olds are technically uh, teenagers. Well, yes, but in a, in, in a court of law, and uh, if you're in the military, because I did 20 years in the army, uh, 17 years old, I was able to buy a house and a new car. And most veterans under 19 years old would be offended if you called them a teenager at that age mm-hmm. with their accomplishments. They're young adults. Well, but, people can be offended about whatever they want. The word teen exists in the actual amount of, uh, you know, the number that it represents their age. So by definition, right. they're, they're a teenager. Yeah. So That's what's the point of doing the research on the road? Where were you going with that? Oh, I, I um, well, actually, I'm a uh, subcontractor for the state highway department, and that's how I came up with that. And the other thing is, is that the word teenager is a spinoff from the 1928 as a catch on words. Uh, no one ever said teen back then. It just rhymed with, it was a play on words and numbers, 13, 14, 15. I guess what I don't understand, what I want to understand, and, and Mark, maybe you're getting it and I'm, I'm missing it, but you brought in all this information about the road and how long the, you know, the, how wide the sidewalks were. What were you trying to Well, my suggestion would be that, uh, that a person who is walking in the middle of the road when there is a big sidewalk would be a person who, you know, perhaps should have got their butt over to the sidewalk. Right. That's my point. And uh, those uh, streets were cut in in 1993 and improved. And it's 60 feet wide. That's why the officer said something to him, because it is an improved road at 35 miles per hour. Well, the officer allegedly uh, stopped him because he was walking down the middle of the road, right? And About that's, by definition, that's disorderly conduct. Uh, so when you're blocking the roadway and preventing cars from going to their destination, uh, that's typically known as disorderly conduct in the criminal statutes. So if that was the reason why he stopped him, it's a legitimate reason to, you know, I think for the police to stop someone. Hey, man, can you get out of the road, please? Uh, but the officer apparently also claimed that he saw cigars in his hand and that that was another reason that he stopped him that he had supposedly just uh, robbed allegedly some kind of a liquor store and jacked with a friend and jacked some cigars off the counter like a $50 box of cigars so anyway Patrick anything else you want to share tonight about the case uh, no, sir. I have no complaints. I love your station. All right. Thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Now, who knows whether uh, Mike Brown actually had the cigars in his hand, as the officer claimed. That's not real clear. I, yeah, I thought that uh, – that, so that was that, that part's confusing me a little bit. All right. um, so I know that there was a robbery. It would seem yes. odd to stop everybody in um, – everybody who had cigars, though. Well, he believed that he fit the description, apparently, okay. of the alleged suspect. Plus, he had cigars allegedly in his hand, at least according to the officer in question here. Okay. Well, um, so we saw nothing, a report last nothing night. changes that a uh, unarmed man was shot in the back, right? Exactly. And even if he had been armed, he wasn't allegedly waving his arms at the police. He wasn't uh, threatening in any way uh, towards them, as I understand it. He had uh, run away. Now, they, there was an alleged scuffle, I guess, between the cop and him in uh, in the police car. I guess the problem but, here is, is that um, it's transparency. I'm supposed to believe the police officer. In this circumstance, mm-hmm. and I have there were witnesses as well. Apparently, w- there were witnesses, yeah. and the witnesses, you know, don't necessarily back up the police officer's story, and that's nope. a difficult, difficult situation. It drags the whole racial component into this, which I would prefer not to have to deal with. Sadly, we do. Um, and you know, if if these uh, cameras in police officer in police cars and. Frankly, I think every police officer in America should have a camera, a body worn camera, too. If these were streaming live to the Internet, there wouldn't be any question. Ferguson wouldn't be on fire right now. You would see what happened, because I don't think people would have to, as nearly as big of a problem with shooting an unarmed man in the back if that un- unarmed man had jacked you in the face two times. Right. Like that's going to be an entirely different conversation than an unarmed man running away that gets shot in the back two times. Are you and saying that he deserved to be shot in the back after he jacked somebody in the face? I'm not claiming that at all i'm claiming that probably ferguson wouldn't be on fire i don't know about that let's go to james in uh, panama city and besides you know those cameras are not available live streamed so you're talking about Why a future not? i i don't that that would be fairly expensive no anyway, it wouldn't you james can, you're my on car Talk c- connects to my cell phone which can stream right to the internet anyway I james go enjoy, ahead i enjoy your show very much i appreciate you taking my call yeah go ahead sir i just have a comment about uh, but all our public service, the way people are criticizing them, 
the word, the phrase in itself or to tell people what they're, their public servants, all the blame is going to come back to the public if you follow it far enough where they are elected, appointed, or whatever. It's our problem. We put them in that position. Now let's respect them and support them. Wait, who do you like want to – wait, hold on. It. Just to clarify, you want to support the police in the Ferguson situation, yes. or are you just making general statements about supporting the police? Now, I want to – I want to uh, support the police in the, the Ferguson situation. Okay. That police chief, in my opinion, did everything, everything right. Just he to clarify, right now, we weren't talking about the chief here. We're talking about the officer who shot the guy. So do you think that he should have shot that man in the back? If he was coming after his gun, absolutely. No, he was 35 feet away. He was 35 feet away, shot in the back. 35 feet away, running away, and allegedly had his hands up in the air. Hang on a second, James. We can bring you back if you'd like. He allegedly had his hands up in the air, waving them to show that he didn't have a weapon as he was running away. Uh, The toll-free number here tonight is 855-450-FREE. The curfew has been called out for Ferguson. We'll give you more details on that coming up. You can share your thoughts on Free Talk Live. It's the heart of summer across America. Thoughts turn to childhood and long days of fun. Everybody would love to feel like a kid again. And HB Extract can be a vital tool in your battle to stay vibrant and young as it supports healthy blood pressure and circulation while balancing cholesterol. GCN and longtime sponsor HB Extract want to help keep your heart healthy with the 30 Bottle 30 Day Summer Giveaway. Enter to win by visiting GCNlive.com between now and August 29th and click on the contact contest banner in the top left corner of the page. HB Extract has helped tens of thousands of people worldwide feel good again. And they've done it with HB Extract's exclusive formula of wild crafted and organic herbs. Here's to you enjoying many more long, warm, and fun-filled summers free of pain and sickness. Visit GCNlive.com and enter to win in the 30 bottle, 30 days summer giveaway with HB Extract. A healthy heart is a happy heart. Sign up now at GCNlive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm I'm, I'm comfortable here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, hey. Who do you think you are? Excuse me. There is no video or audio allowed in this. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared of property. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? 
Democrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Saturday edition of the program. We've got plenty of time for you to call in, take control of the airwaves, bring up whatever's on your mind. Coming up, if we get a chance, population control um, on a kind of a wider scale. There's an editorial piece at Wired Magazine that Mark may share with us, but your calls come first here. We're heavy into the Ferguson topic, which is uh, is a good thing. I'm, I'm glad people are talking about this. Um, there was some discussion about it earlier this week on Free Talk Live. For those of you who don't get the weekday program on your local radio station, you can always go and download episodes. Uh, Mark, you guys hit it up initially on Tuesday night, and then Daryl and Ellen and I, uh, we really dug into it for about a couple hours last night. But there's been developments. Last night, there was, you know, supposedly things had slowed down. The protests that were happening were all allegedly peaceful. And then apparently late last night, things went uh, pretty crazy in Ferguson. There's now a curfew. We can talk more about that here in a moment. Also, take your calls at 855-450-FREE. Now, if you care about online privacy, check out ProXPN. It's a global virtual private network. It encrypts your data, meaning that before anything leaves the network port on your computer, it's encrypted. So your internet service provider, local uh, people might be sitting in the coffee shop trying to sniff out your Wi-Fi packets. Anybody who's trying to get into your information uh, from that, you know, from that local perspective, is not going to be able to do it if you're using ProXPN because it encrypts your data. Go to proxpn.com/ftl. You can get started there. Download their free app for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, as well as Android devices. Linux users setups a little different for you, but it also works with Linux. Uh, you can get 50% off of the premium account, the annual account, by using code FTL50 at proxpn.com/ftl. And if you want to save even more on that annual account, use this code for a Bitcoin discount of 62% off, FTLBTC. So two codes. If you're not going to do Bitcoin, it's FTL50. If you got Bitcoin, FTL BTC for the, the deepest discount. On Pro XPN with that premium account, you'll get unlimited bandwidth servers around the world to connect to. And you can even privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. Go and learn more and get started right now at proxpn.com slash FTL. And don't forget codes FTL50 or FTL BTC. Uh, we go back to the phones with your calls and thoughts. James is listening in Panama City. Now, James, you called in initially saying there are public servants and we've got to support them. And you were talking about specifically the people, uh, the police in Ferguson. Uh, we then pointed out that the officer in question here uh, allegedly shot this man in the back and shot him at a distance of 35 feet away as he was running away with his hands in the air. Does that change how you feel about uh, just by default supporting the police? Not, not at all. I just have not heard enough about the man being the man, not a child. He's a man, not a child. Not I didn't call child. him a child. I, 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 everybody else seems to want to call him okay. a child. He's eighteen well, years old. Let's be old. clear. He's I didn't call him a child. I wouldn't care if he was that's seventeen right. years old. He's that's a young right. man. No, you have to, no, you have to care if he's seventeen. He's not of age. He's not a man. He would. He's be not a. a what, then, cut it out. Would you just <laughs> cut it out? First, you I mean, say. <laughs> first, you say that we have to respect public service. Then you assume that the government age of majority somehow makes somebody a man. It's ridiculous. I mean, their seventeenth, the, the, the day before their eighteenth birthday, okay. they are the okay. same person they are the day after. Okay, do this. When your child, if you had a child, when I he do. commits a crime that's seventeen years old, I did. See if they come and talk to you. See if they come and talk to you. They. <laughs> the <laughs> fact is, I can tell you, when I was seventeen years old, the police picked me up and didn't let me talk to my parents. So they treated no, they me like a man. Know. Thanks, James, for the call tonight. I appreciate it. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Let's continue here. We've got Lance listening in Atlantic City to WPG. Hello, Lance. Hey, good evening. Uh, first and foremost, um, uh, my condolences to everyone involved, the family of the young man, Mr. Brown, that unfortunately made poor decisions while he was in the store, and also for the officer in charge that uh, unfortunately – uh, made a impromptu decision to whatever he did, but this is uh, still under investigation. Bottom line is, 
I hate to say it, but the media, not you, not your radio station, but the visual media mm-hmm. that puts news out and social media, tweets, YouTube, everything that anybody has a cell phone. I'm surprised that no one there had a cell phone until after the episode went down. Well, you're, talking about the shooting of, uh, you're talking about the shooting of Michael Brown in, in Ferguson. Absolutely. Okay, and, so and I, is, I'm a journalist, and I have a cell phone that has a camera on it, and I can actually stream absolutely. live to the Internet. But it takes me sometimes as long as 30, 45 seconds, seconds to get going. Seconds? Absolutely. And you don't know. The spontaneity. See, that's the thing that, uh, that a lot of people don't understand. Law enforcement officers, when they go through the training program, they are taught to use deadly force, shoot to kill. Now, I, I don't know. They're supposed exactly to be, hold on, they're supposed to be taught to only, you know, to try to de escalate encounters. They're supposed to be taught to only use the appropriate amount of force in response to what is being used against them in order to be able to What's subdue your first name? the individual. What's your first name? I'm Ian, and Mark's on the other side of the, the table here. Ian, mm-hmm. Mark. Regardless of what job we take and what training we get, we're supposed to be gifted and endowed with common sense. And as long as I can remember a fifth or my fifth or sixth year that I was growing up, if a police officer or a person in authority in a uniform said to me, stop, halt, I stopped, I halted, and I didn't move. And that's common sense. See, no one I don't think that's common sense. That. See, the fact is, is when you're talking about different uh, different groups, different groups deal with law enforcement differently. If, for Absolutely. instance, now let, let, let's let's look at the history of police in the United States. The fact is, you can look at the lineage from slave grabbers. You know, the people that went out and captured slaves and returned them to their masters, and how you those mean people bounty moved. You mean yeah, bounty they, hunters. they moved directly into law enforcement. Same individuals. Um, Police didn't even exist until the 1850s. Those people transitioned over, and oftentimes law enforcement has been used as a as an agency to control, um, you know, people of color. I wouldn't doubt for a second that there are people I, I, of color in this nation wait, 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 wait. that, when a police Ian, officer says Ian, to halt, they they run. Ian, please Mark. don't say people of color. All right, because back in the 1850s, there was still a class set up society. You were either an indentured now? servant or you were becoming, you were evolving out of being in slavery. Indentured servitude didn't exist the 19, in the 1850s. It, it, it wasn't, Brother, you're it, still in slavery. On. I hate to break yeah, this to well, you, but... Uh, I have news for you. People enslaved themselves, Ian, and you know that. Come on. People I'm not sure what do you mean by that. Them, you mean to like I banks? Mean, they make decisions that shorten their opportunities to make rational decisions. And they do it either out of insecurities, peer pressure, or cultural values. There's certainly now, no doubt that people I'm can not, choose. I'm not, a socio- Ian, yeah. I'm not a sociologist. I'm right. not into Me neither. the ethnic But we can both talk and... about these things. Now, Lance, Absolutely. thank you for the call tonight. But... I do appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855 855- 450 free. Sure, people can choose to enslave themselves to addiction. They can choose to enslave themselves to uh, some sort of Here's what I don't understand. understand. Why in the world are people defending a, 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 a public servant, you know, your employee that was supposed to be here to protect you, that shot another civilian, just like you, in the back, who was unarmed? At this point, there's, there's no defense for that. Mark, he stole a box of cigars. He may or may not have stolen a box of cigars. He may or may not have punched somebody but that's not a reason to draw your weapon and use deadly force Absolutely. this was a neighborhood do you know how i mean when police officers shoot they often miss two out of three times yep. you're lucky this bullet didn't go somewhere and kill someone else too go through the side of a home right through a baby or something like that it's not unheard of uh so again we will take your calls here and you can share your thoughts at 855 450 free tina's with us listening in wisconsin to the mic 92.1 hey tina Hey, I have actually a couple of comments. Sure. Um, First, I want to point out that I'm black. I'm a black woman uh, raised by a very, very strong black woman um, and very proud of that. Um, But the two comments I want to make are this. Uh, The first one is we're we're saying in terms of the tape that was released about the gentleman, uh, the black gentleman in the white T-shirt and the uh, the hat who strong arms 
a gentleman in a convenience store and sold some cigars, we're saying we don't, we don't know whether or not that that's this gentleman. It may, we're, may we're, You're right. It may or may not be. Right. Stand by. I want you to get to point your second point, but hang on. We're going to bring you back for that. More with Tina in moments. Your calls are welcome as well here on Free Talk Live's Live Saturday show. Crashed. The Death of the Dollar. It's a hot new novel that has a lot of people talking. It explores what our government's reaction to a U.S. currency collapse would be. And when the government nationalizes all supply chains in an effort to keep order, the sentiment voiced towards such a tyranny is, we're not picking the fight. The government already did that. We'll just be fighting back for a change. This is a great book, but don't take my word for it. Look at the reviews on Amazon. Bernie says, Crashed is a really terrifying trip. It is thought-provoking. It makes you wonder, what if? Could this happen? Gary Jones ads. This is an excellent book. It is also a little scary because it could very well be true. I hope it's fiction, and Julia Moffat calls it a gripping read and the most exciting and insightful book this year. Crash is a fast-paced read that has two-thirds of its Amazon reviewers calling for a sequel. This book is totally worth your time. It's well-researched, liberty-oriented, realistic, gripping, and gritty. Do yourself a favor and don't miss this one. Get your copy at Amazon. Crashed, The Death of the Dollar by William Cooper. Hi, this is Larry Smith. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. When the cleaners ruined some special clothing, all they could do was show us a sign that said they weren't responsible. But when they got the letter from one of our Legal Shield attorneys, he promptly gave us a check for $1,152. Worry less and live more with lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com or call 855-340-SAVE. That's 855-340-7283. Results will vary from case to case. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. You know how annoying it is when someone keeps stopping mid-sentence as though he or she were asking you a series of questions? Avoid doing that. It sounds unnervingly tentative, and it imposes upon the listener to help you complete the thought. And if you're a job seeker, this alone could be a deal killer. An effective communicator sounds more confident. Complete the thought. Avoid making the listener impatient. With money and attention so scarce now, Effective communication skills have never been more important. Cutting through the clutter rather than blending into the blah, blah, blah will help you connect better no matter what the conversation. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Survivalspeech.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live, the live Saturday edition of the program. Your calls are welcome on whatever's on your mind. A lot of people want to talk about Ferguson, police, state. That seems to be pretty clear. If you haven't been paying attention until now, surprise! 
the police have been arming up with all kinds of tanks and guns and fatigues and eh, basically pretending like they're the military, which, of course, is a scary thing, as uh, one of the folks from the Cato Institute pointed out in an article we shared last night. When you start dressing the police as though they're the military and treating them like they're the military, that can change their mindset. Let's say move it away from respecting the rights of the people they're supposed to be so-called serving to just following orders and enforcing laws mindlessly. Well, in many cases, these uh, people, these police officers are military members, so they're Formerly, using, this, yeah, yeah, this, using the same equipment. In many cases, doing, you know, being asked to do similar jobs. Uh, you know, this this work here in Ferguson um, f- for a while there looked a lot like what you might see going on in, um, you know, yeah. civilian suppression in a foreign country. Let's so, bring yeah. Tina back on the line here. She's in Wisconsin, the Madison area, listening to the Mike ninety two point one. Now, Tina, you wanted to make two points. You said you are a black lady uh, there in the Madison area. Can you recap point number one for me? Yes. Um, based on the video that was released, um, this uh, gentleman, uh, the video that I saw on YouTube about uh, someone robbing a convenience store, and obviously, you know, in our society, in a lot of societies, perception is reality. So, you know, now we've got this firestorm of people who believe that he walked into the store and grab somebody by the neck and slam them to the floor and stole cigars, okay? We don't know if that happened. We don't know if that's him or not. And in the same sense of that, none of us were there when this young man got shot, as mm-hmm. tragic as it is. And we don't know what happened. We just have absolutely no idea what happened. We've heard accounts. We've heard people say what happened. But when we're releasing information out to the public about things that none of us know nothing about, that's part of what fuels the fire and not only in the community but in other communities outside of the community and that's where a part of my frustration is that's my first point my second point is based on let's say that this video proves that the gentleman who was there um was mr brown and he stole these cigars and did what he did in this video what i think is a larger problem and what we really need to understand as as black people is that the root of this is how do we keep black men from being in those positions and being in backs of squad cars? And the reason why I'm saying this is because we know that there's police brutality. We know that there's racism within the police department. Mm-hmm. We know that they do these things. Why in God's name are black men, are black men making decisions that are going to put them in a position where something like this could potentially happen. Is this Should more? Is this hold on? Is this about black men as much as it is young men? I mean, isn't it more likely to be young men of all skin colors who are going to do things well, you like have, robberies? You have to under, You have to understand that I I grew up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I don't live there anymore, but that's where I grew up. Mm. And Milwaukee is probably one of the most segregated cities in the entire United States. And every single night on the news in Milwaukee, the only thing that you hear about are shootings in our black communities and black men ending up in the back of squad cars. And um, and we have had situations where black men have been shot and situations where um, the cops have been chasing a black man who just came from robbing a store and, and, and has gotten shot and gotten seriously hurt. And we want to blame the police. And I'm not defending what the police in Ferguson did. But what I'm saying is, is that the biggest problem is don't we have to try and teach our young men not to put ourselves in a position to be put in the line of fire in situations where we know that there's potential for people to not do the right thing. Yeah, I agree and with this completely. Really, um, and, and that's the really unfortunate part of, 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 of this. And I, and I think is a much stronger message that needs to be put out there. Well, this there. is right. I mean, isn't this essentially a larger conversation? And it's a fine conversation to have about, well, okay, you've got young, I think it's also a young person thing as well, a young male. Uh, I agree. Thing, but incarceration of, of, as a, a young percentage of male. young black males is significantly higher than incarceration there's rates. There's no of, doubt. Uh, okay. And I think that has something to do with racist cops. Uh, you know, I'm not going to disagree, but I there. think that it also has something to do with sort of an institutional culture. I've told you about my friend Reggie, who mm-hmm. I um, met in prison, knew him for a couple of years. I met him out at a, uh, a movie, um, you know, just out when we were out on the streets. And I said, hey, what are you doing for work and he says work i don't work and he mm. acts he said like like i had Brother, just i can take you to white him. <laughs> trailer parks that have the same kind of people in them fine so i think this is a conversation right, and it's about true. right that, that's very 
very true. This what is a question is about, true. I think, more about poverty. I mean, yes, uh, rich kids are going to screw around too, but probably in not as as, as dangerous a uh, fashion uh, involving you know robberies and home home invasions and things like that. So then it becomes a question about poverty and how can we alleviate, help people alleviate themselves of uh, sort of the poverty well, trap, if you will. And I think that to to right. answer that question, my answer to it is to get the government's boot off of poor people's necks. I mean, the government, uh, the you know, various different state governments and local governments all around the country, especially the federal government, they make creating a life for oneself very difficult, creating a business. For instance, if you right. are a poor person and you want to open up a business, let's say a restaurant, in most places, in a lot of cities, you would not be able to open up a restaurant in your own kitchen. But that would be a way for a poor person to begin serving food to people without having a lot of overhead over yeah. top of them to make some money to get some bills paid. And maybe if people could, you know, could become entrepreneurs without having to beg some government bureaucrats' permission, we'd have more innovators, we'd have more people who were starting their own businesses think, rather than selling I, I drugs think, in the streets. And of course, we can also legalize drugs. I agree drugs. with that, but what I think part of that problem is, and, and part of what we have to do with that, and what you need to understand is that if we are not teaching people how to value themselves and how to see themselves as valuable, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what the government gives you. If you don't believe that that's something that you're capable of doing to the best of your ability, that's true. The, what, what they give you is not going to matter. I'm not and saying it's going to be a panacea. I'm not saying it's going to solve all you know all the starts, world's ills. It starts with the community, and it starts with the family. And I'm saying this from experience because I grew up unbelievably poor, ridiculously poor. And my mother taught me at a very, very young age. I mean, she talked me through it throughout almost my whole life. Look. There's going to be people who aren't going to hire you because of the, the color of your skin. Mm -hmm. There's going to be people who aren't, who aren't going to like you from the black side because you talk like a white person. But you need to pull forward, and you need to understand your value. Tina, I mean, she pounded it into me. I want to thank you for your call tonight. It was very thoughtful, and I appreciate you taking this in a different yeah. direction. Thank you for it. The toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. If I, I love having the racial conversations where it's not like hidden and it's not charged. I mean, but you were a little white thug when you were 17, right? Indeed I was. Yeah. You were 17. You weren't. Well, you know, I wasn't as bad. I, I did a few things at school that probably were uh, were not so appropriate. But I really just wanted to, to be cool and fit in. Yeah. Honestly, that's all I wanted to do. I wanted to be cooler than the next guy. Well, of course, when you're 17, 16, 15, uh, you know, getting a job can be very, very difficult. I had a job since I was 12. Well, you're unusual, but uh, in a lot of cases... Now uh, I'm unusual. I was just ordinary I think a that's ago. unusual. I think that that's unusual, somebody yeah, to be it's working very a unusual. job at, at age 12. Um, did I say you were ordinary? If so, I, well, I, I was a thug, I said at, you were a thug uh, at age 17. 17. I don't know if that meant that you were ordinary. I was just kind of describing that, you know, I don't think it's necessarily so much about it being, you know, black young people as much as it is just people who are in poverty and tough places to live. They feel like they don't have options. And when you when you don't have options, maybe gang activity is a, is an option for you. Now, of course, if we were to legalize drugs and legalize prostitution and gambling, that would take a whole lot of uh, the areas of criminality away from people. There, you know, there there would probably still be gangs because people want to belong to something, but they'd be more likely out tagging just, things than yeah, stealing. At, and, at that point, you're just talking about a club. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when if there's no if gangs there's no, have to have something to run, basically. Yeah, if there's yeah. no organized crime, then a gang then gangs don't really exist. Let's continue with your calls and thoughts. Charles is listening in North Dakota. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Charles. Yeah, I wanted two questions, um, but just referring to what you just said, if we legalized murder, we'd have lost fewer murderers, too. That's, That's ridiculous. True. Gangs you know, might very well... My gangs might really yeah, go towards anyway. um, doing hitmen or something like that, but yeah. there's a difference yeah, between murder a, can... because there's a victim and smoking crack <laughs> because there's not. Well, yeah, right? but that's your opinion. Other people don't may might not agree with you. Well, but those my, other people need to show were... me a pit. They need to show me a victim. Uh, my, my 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 two questions were: A, do you actually do we know that this guy was shot in the back? Hey, that's that's the, news the allegations. Well, we don't know much of that, anything yeah, but, okay, because the wait, police wait, 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 won't wait. release their video. Wait, 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 wait. So that's so that's an allegation. So nobody actually knows it. Then, am I correct? Well, well let me. I if, wasn't there, so well, anything else is hearsay. If they keep you in the dark and so, feed you, okay, okay. if they so, keep you in the dark so and they feed so you crap, you'll grow mushrooms too. Point, the fact is, we don't point, have any evidence because is, the police will not release the evidence. Okay, so you don't know whether he was shot in the back or not. You don't hey, know anything. That's point number one. All okay. Right. okay. Well, Did O.J. Simpson kill his okay. wife? <laughs> Let me ask you this. Did O.J. Simpson hey, kill his hey, wife? Hey, hey, buddy. 
You just answered my question. Nobody knows if this guy was even shot in the back. All right. Me, Everything we get from the media, question. we don't know anything. Brother, you don't even know if you're alive. Thanks so for my, the call tonight. I appreciate it. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Yeah, I mean, we have to go by what we hear, and that's what we report here on Free Talk Live, just like you're free to report as well. But the story that I've seen has not yet been challenged. The story that this man has been shot in the back, uh, Michael Brown there in uh, Ferguson, 855-450 free. It's Free Talk Live. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Americans are reeling from Obamacare, higher prices, and an epidemic of policy lapses. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com has you covered. World-class medical and surgery at one of Asia's most modern hospitals. 300 doctors, surgeons, and dentists serving 300,000 patients a year. Fractions of U.S. prices. Friends or family forced to go out of pocket? Avoid bankruptcy. Tell them to run. Run like hell. Hit us up now. We'll show you how. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Juicy Juice, 100% juice, providing a full serving of fruit in every four ounces. Visit us at JuicyJuice.com. When it comes to nutrition, kids need both fruits and vegetables every day to stay healthy and grow. For the ideal mix, your kid should have at least one and a half cups of any veggie or 100% veggie juice and one cup of any fruit or 100% fruit juice a day. For more tips like these, visit us at Parenthood.com slash Your Family Today. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, August 16th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.57 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,305 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $505. Antiwar.com reports images of camouflaged U.S. police wielding military-grade equipment and armored vehicles cracking down on public protest on the streets of Ferguson, Missouri, have become an enduring image in the minds of Americans and have finally brought attention to years of militarization of U.S. civilian police forces. Growing concern has finally caught the notice of the Senate Armed Services Committee and the chairman, Senator Carl Levin from Michigan, says that the Pentagon's policy of arming police will be reviewed before the next military spending bill is passed. Levin says, Congress established this program out of real concern that local law enforcement agencies were literally outgunned by drug criminals, referring to the 1033 program. Drug war hysteria was the nominal pretext for the 1033, the Department of Defense Excess Property Program, which was passed in 1993 to provide surplus Pentagon equipment to law enforcement across the country. Under the law, the weapons are only supposed to be used for counter-drug investigations and activities, though for years the Pentagon has been giving tanks, armored vehicles, grenade launchers, and everything else to small-town American police, which have turned themselves into miniaturized militaries. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. 
CBS Miami reports proposed special elections in the seven congressional districts in Florida redrawn by the legislature earlier this week would have to wait until at least spring of next year, according to the Secretary of State's office in a court filing on Friday. The special elections could not take place until after the regular November vote was certified and some other post-election reports were finished, a process that will last until December, according to the filing. Accounting for all the things that would have to be done to prepare prepare for the special elections, Secretary of State Ken Detzner said that the earliest possible Tuesday for a primary election would be March 17th. A general election could then be held May 26th. But voting rights organizations and voters who sued to overturn the original plan for the congressional districts, which were approved in 2012, say it's not fair to hold elections based on unconstitutional districts. The judge is expected to hold a hearing on Wednesday on the new map and the possibility of a special election. Meanwhile, the legislature filed a brief Friday describing the new map to the judge and defending it from the anticipated challenge by plaintiffs in the redistricting lawsuit. The attorney for the state legislature wrote, No member, Democrat or Republican, introduced a plan in the special session that did not in some fashion unite minority communities in Jacksonville and Orlando with strong support from both sides of the aisle. A Jacksonville to Orlando district does not reflect a partisan gerrymander. Hi, I'm Daryl W. Perry, and I need your help to take Peace, Love, Liberty Radio on the road. During the 104-day trip, I'll be visiting at least 10 cities across the country, speaking to people about the ideas of peace, love, and liberty, while simultaneously continuing to create daily liberty media. To find out more about the tour or to donate, visit GoFundMe.com slash FPPCC. That's GoFundMe.com slash FPPCC. Antiwar.com reports, a new statement from Yemen-based Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula called on its allies and supporters to attack targets belonging to the United States and its allies. The statement declared, go after America as part of a plan for jihad militarily, economically, and through the media, saying the attacks would be retaliation for the ongoing air war in Iraq. While many Al-Qaeda factions have been hostile towards ISIS, Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula has expressed support for them, leading to growing U.S. fear that the two factions, both being targeted by U.S. forces, could collaborate. Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, of course, was already trying to target the U.S. because of the ongoing U.S. drone war against them. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. An amateur sailor has announced his plans to sail around the world to decrease awareness of important global issues. 29-year-old Michael Gilmer will cover approximately 28,000 nautical miles over three months, all the while drawing attention away from famine afflicting several African nations, revolution in the Middle East, flooding in Thailand, and economic instability across five continents. The goal here is to really make people think about a young, overconfident on an expensive boat rather than the pressing matters of substance that actually affect people's lives. As Gilmer set off on his journey Thursday, something was happening in Washington. In local news, a cute eight-year-old is beginning to realize how much better she is than ugly girls. Since I'm cute and they're not, that means that they're not as good as me. In other news, a slaughterhouse worker is told to stop naming them all. And sure, an area man can watch your cat while his life is falling apart, no problem. You have just participated in a large-scale psychological research study. Please fill out the attached liability waiver and send it to the onion.com slash newsbeat. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything. We're here live. The Saturday edition of the program. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Uh, just about every call so far tonight has tied into the Ferguson, Missouri continued. I don't know if you want to call it a crisis. It's a pretty serious situation there where uh, you got protesters out in the streets, not only protesters, but also probably some agents, provocateur, uh, government agents sort of ginning up more violence. And also looters are uh, going in and destroying storefronts and taking out uh, property. And amidst all of that, of course, the police are responding with uh, appears to be in a lot of cases some inappropriate levels of violence. There was the shooting of uh, one Michael Brown, who is an 18-year-old young man 
allegedly shot in the back by a police officer who for a while was not being named and finally the information was released i think thanks part in part due to anonymous some of their efforts from what i understand yeah there have been uh, more details here. In fact, let me give you a little bit more info. We've got folks who have been waiting patiently. We're going to jump right back into your calls. But as I mentioned, uh, there has been a curfew put into effect starting tonight. So according to the story from stltoday.com, the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, the governor has uh, declared a state of emergency and ordered a curfew to apply to Ferguson. It goes into effect at midnight tonight and runs until 5 a.m. Officials did not provide details on the curfew boundaries. We also don't know at this time if there will be uh, exemptions for people who are, let's say, going to work, for instance. You know, people work in a late shift uh, trying to get from point A to point B. What will that be like? Uh, if you are trying to get to your job, let's say I don't really care. Um, you should be free to get out of your, leave your house at any time of the day or night. You should, or be. you're not yeah. in a free country. No, you're not in a free country. Surprise. Well, <laughs> I know that. Right. But my biggest concern here isn't because I I understand there's you know it does, it looks like it could very well be that we have bad actors on both sides or you know maybe one side is righteous and the other side isn't. I don't know. The answer to that I suspect specifically. There are more than two sides involved in this, Mark. Well, there's a guy, there's a, a shooter, there's and a dead person. There's protesters, and then there's protesters. looters, there's police. But the protesters have a lot of. Well, there's looters certainly, but yeah. the protesters have a. You know, we don't we don't know the specifics, as the last caller said. But here's one thing we do know specifically: that we, as the public, that the public servants, the police officers, have never not in their history, made an effort to keep us informed. Now, this is supposed to be a democratic republic where we, the people, are the government. Mm -hmm. You can't be the government if you are misinformed and uninformed. We li It's 2014. The technology exists that cameras, uh, officer-mounted and car-mounted cameras can be uploaded immediately to the Internet via cell phones. I mean, if you can play Pandora in your car, which I can, um, then you can upload video directly to the Internet. There is no reason at all that we shouldn't have video of what happened on the Internet that we can all look at and decide who's Believe right and who's not, wrong. Mark, not everyone has a smartphone. Yet, so. They're police officers, Ian. They can be right. issued smartphones. I see what you're saying. You meant from the police's perspective. That's I the you people were, we're talking about here. I thought here. you were blaming the witnesses. Okay, I'm Why sorry. Why would I, I blame the witnesses? It's not a witness's job. We're paying the police officers yeah. to do a job. They do not do that job. They do not serve. They have no obligation to serve well, you, sir, and they, you're not paying. Uh, you're and not it's paying not even directly. the officers on the street. When's it's the, the brass that do not want us to get this information. When's the last time you signed a police officer's paycheck? Look. I'm telling you that they tell us a story. That story has to do with them being public servants right. and working for us. And the more you pay attention to what they actually do, the more you know that's just a story and it doesn't really apply. You can say and it or not, to, but yeah. until they start acting like they do, then I'm just going to call it out as a lie. They're, I pointed right. out it's a lie. Yeah, they are absolutely dis very dishonest. In fact, many police officers are trained to lie to try to get you to admit something and get yourself locked up. Uh, let's continue with your calls and thoughts here, whether it's on Ferguson or anything that happens to be on your mind. Let's go to Frank. He's in New Jersey. You're on Free Talk Live. Frank. Yes, hi. How are you? Listen, uh, I, I like to start off by saying that one life, regardless of what color you are, it's too much to lose. However, I would like to see the black community, just as the white community, as enraged when you have hundreds of black men being killed by black men, like in Chicago. So let's all get together. Let's be enraged about black on black as well, and not just be enraged when a white cop, right or wrong, kills a black man. Like I How said about before. How we just stop the whole rage thing? I mean, can we just not have rage in general? I don't think that leads to good things. I mean, what we've seen here in Ferguson and has been, you know, certainly happened in in the past. Uh, the Rodney King incident, of course, comes to mind, obviously. But uh, you see people destroying businesses. What? The businesses didn't have anything to do with why this guy was shot exactly, in the streets. Exactly, exactly. So I like to see the black community just, just we'll use the word concern, just as well, concern. Can, when hold you on have a second. I'm pretty sure the black, black community black isn't listening. Right, black. hold on. That's, that's not fair to say the black community. Like that they that they're all this uh, this mass that they're that they're all connected and they're not d well, individuals who have differing viewpoints on what's actually going on out there's there. There's no black community in the same way there's no white community. Right. So what do you really right, want so to see happen? Uh, 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 what, what, 
what I like to see happen is what's happening in Ferguson happen in Chicago and in all of those other communities where there's a lot of black and black crime. Let's let's do that so we get to the root of everything together. Not just because one white man killed kill uh, uh, and shot a, a black man. Very unfortunate, by the way, that this happened. Let's also stand for those men, black men, that are being killed by other black men as well. Well, I'm against all murder. I mean, I, whether it's black uh, man killing a black man or a white woman killing a white man or whatever we're talking about, uh, let's just stop the killings. How about that? Thanks for the call tonight, Frank. I appreciate hearing from you. Unfortunately, as long as people have disagreements, as long as people have strong feelings on things, there will likely continue to be violence. There will likely, in some cases, continue to be killings. And if we had the police out there actually investigating crimes like murder, and that was their primary do- uh, job, rather than, say, harassing people in urban neighborhoods for things like having a plant on their body, stopping and frisking people like we're seeing in New York and Philadelphia and Washington, D.C., I believe, where just any old time they want, they'll stop people on the streets and give them a good frisk, see if they got anything interesting on them. You want to start? So, how about the police start treating people with respect? And instead of disrespecting individuals' rights, they actually respected people's rights. Then maybe they would see more cooperation coming from people in urban communities and in other places as well. Because, by the way, plenty of uh, white people are now learning the uh, police oppression, uh, considering that now they're targeting everyone more often. Uh, But there's definitely no doubt that there's racist cops out there. Your comments are welcome. 855-450-FREEZE, the toll-free number. When we say we should, you know, I'd like to see the black community do this and black community do that. I think it's um, kind of nonsensical because let's not forget that the government has control of these children, the vast majority of them, for at least 10 years prior to the whatever crimes it is that uh, you know they're committing or whatever. So if if blame needs to be laid, it can be laid as thoroughly at the the feet of the state as it can be any place else. I mean, how can you have control of other people's children for 8 hours a day, half of the time they're awake and th- they turn out this way? Debbie is on the line in St. Louis, uh, fairly near the Ferguson area. Debbie, you're on Free Talk Live. Oh, hi. My name's Debbie. I'm from a suburb in St. Louis, and I've been traveling this week, uh, mostly in Georgia and Florida, and every place I went, all I saw was my town being portrayed as racist. And it breaks my heart because there are so many good people and organizations in St. Louis that want to help these people. They will do so many things, the churches, the social organizations, various groups, and I just want the country to know that. And, you know, that breaks my heart. But something else that breaks my heart is the fact that we do have a huge problem with crime in St. Louis. And much of it is black on black and black on white. And my neighborhood was affected recently that four black men decided they wanted to beat up a a white suburban guy. And they came to my neighborhood to do it and left the man for dead. Mm. And um, that is tragic. And I would like to know when the black leaders you said the black community isn't responsible, but I want to know black when the leader? black leader. What is that supposed to mean? Who's the white well, leader? Do see. I have a white leader? Can I, uh, you know, who do I get in touch well, with? Who, how do. do I call we, up my well, white leader? Who would that be? Okay. Well, uh, why are you being so outrageous? That's I not really outrageous. I just don't think that there is one. I just want to understand what you're talking about. Now, hang on, Debbie. We can bring you back here in a moment. I'm We've not sure been lied that. to most of our lives and told there's a black community. That's what I find yeah. ridiculous. Let's uh, continue here. The toll-free number, 855-453. You take control here. This is Free Talk Live. Crashed. The Death of the Dollar. It's a hot new novel that has a lot of people talking. It explores what our government's reaction to a U.S. currency collapse would be. And when the government nationalizes all supply chains in an effort to keep order, the sentiment voiced towards such a tyranny is, we're not picking the fight. The government already did that. We'll just be fighting back for a change. This is a great book, but don't take my word for it. Look at the reviews on Amazon. Bernie says, Crashed is a really terrifying trip. It is thought-provoking. It makes you wonder, what if? Could this happen? Gary Jones ads. This is an excellent book. It is also a little scary because it could very well be true. I hope it's fiction, and Julia Moffat calls it a gripping read and the most exciting and insightful book this year. Crash is a fast-paced read that has two-thirds of its Amazon reviewers calling for a sequel. 
This book is totally worth your time. It's well-researched, liberty-oriented, realistic, gripping, and gritty. Do yourself a favor and don't miss this one. Get your copy at Amazon. Crashed, The Death of the Dollar by William Cooper. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realist, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should, too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. The reason why I reject violence, and part of that is there's a humility in it, and that you have to acknowledge that I may not be right. You know, I I, I, want to have an open discussion with people. Let's let's talk this stuff out. I'm not going to impose my views on you with violence because I will not presume to be so right that I can that I'm just going to force my views on you. In addition, if your views are so valid and so great, then you shouldn't have to force them on anybody. Then you should be able to persuade folks. Right. Uh, this is the, this Make is the truly better. the acid test of a good idea. If it's a good idea to educate everybody, then you should be able to do it in a free market. If it's a good idea without for force, ma- right? Without well, force. That's if you've got enough persuasive ability to convince a majority of people to vote to violently fund something, you've got enough potential to motivate that many people to contribute toward it. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from seven to ten Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever you want. Just dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And we've got Skype, too. You can call in on the Skype line. You just have to send us a contact request first. Our contact name is lrn.fm, so send that on over when you get a chance. We'll approve it, and you'll be able to get in touch with us via Skype. And you'll sound better than the average caller, I think, if you call via Skype. So keep that in mind as an option. And also, great option to go and get Bitcoins, Dogecoin, Litecoin, Blackcoin, Darkcoin. You can get them all over at ExpressCoin. They are the best option. ExpressCoin.com pride themselves on their customer service, and they manage to keep costs down. The cost to actually transfer money into Bitcoins through ExpressCoin is probably the lowest you'll find anywhere. At least it's the lowest I've ever seen yeah, at 3% above $40. But if you buy less than $40 worth of Bitcoin or those other coins and use code FTL, you'll get that $40 worth transferred for free, which is awesome, or up to $40 worth. Yeah, they talk in the news about Bitcoin, but they never tell you how to get 
get Bitcoin. Expresscoin.com is the place to do that. Yep, and uh, you can also use their smartphone app. Download that at Expresscoin.com. You can pay with money order, check, wire transfer, even cash deposit at credit unions with shared branching. So very cool stuff. And it's also now available in Canada. So don't forget Expresscoin.com and use code FTL when you're checking out to get less than $40 worth of Bitcoin transferred to you for no cost. Uh, let's continue with your calls and thoughts. By the way, I think it was Debbie who was on the line with us. She had called me outrageous uh, because I responded to her statement that she wanted some kind of a statement from the black leaders. And I asked her, well, who's my white leader? I mean, who who do I look to if, if the black people have leaders? Who are the equivalents in the, the white person world, whatever that means? It's a ridiculous idea. She called me outrageous for that, and then at some point during the break, she hung up the phone. So unfortunately, we don't get her back here to uh, to explain herself. So who is the white leader, or who are the white leaders? I'm not even sure what race is. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you're saying who the white leaders are, and I don't yeah. know the answer to that. But I'm The not answer even... is I don't have a leader. I'm right. my own leader. Thanks. <laughs> uh, but I'm not even sure what race is. Uh, you know, I mean, we're yeah. looking at what, what you'll often find when people talk about Barack Obama. He's a, he's mm-hmm. an excellent example. He had a white mom, black dad. Big deal. I mean, which one is he? He mm. certainly he grew up with, uh, you know, the white mom, the white grandma. And so, you know, certainly grew up in white culture in many ways, had lots of white friends when he grew up and then for whatever reason, decided to you know marry a black lady. That's fine. I have a, a good friend who's um, married to a, a white lady. I, you know, what difference does it make? Let's continue with your calls and thoughts here. The toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. David is in Chesapeake, Virginia, listening to WNIS. Hello, David. Hello. Is this Ian? It is. And, and Mark. Mark. Go ahead. Is, well, hi. Uh, yes, good talking to you. I've spoke to you before. Welcome. Um, first, first and foremost, um, I'm not calling about race or anything like that. Okay. I live in a very diverse um, area in the city of Chesapeake, Virginia. Our police department is very diverse also. And But my comment that I'd like to make is that with all the mayhem and the looting and, you know, just a lawlessness, basically, for the ones that don't want to have peaceful demonstrations, would they rather that the police uh, just don't show up and let them burn their own town down. Yeah, I think that this is. Um, you know, I, I absolutely agree. The the looting doesn't help anybody's uh, you know story. It doesn't help to get the protests out there, or does it? I mean, there's lots of peaceful protests that go on in America, and they don't get a lot of news. However, looting, rioting, and fire certainly do. Well, I'd like to point out that some business owners in Ferguson are saying the police aren't showing up. Yes, and they're standing out in right. front of their stores with guns, and they're yeah. protecting them. Right. Well, what what my what I meant by that is, would the, would that community just rather that the police didn't show up at all, and you know because they seem to have a problem with it, and I understand about it the depends, military. man. That's the thing. Uh, I mean, if the police were actually enforcing crimes with victims, if they were in you know they were investigating, if one hundred percent of the time they were investigating murders and rapes and robberies and things like that, then I don't think people would have as much of a problem with them showing up somewhere. They would likely be welcomed. But in a lot of cases, when the police show up, if they're showing up at your house, they might shoot your dog to death. They may uh, arrest one of your brothers or sisters for having a plant on them, or who knows what other you know victimless crime. So, yeah, I don't blame people for not wanting them around. The police are dangerous in a lot of cases. Yeah, well, one of the ki- concerns yeah, well, I have here when it comes to security is is that um, you don't have choices. So, you know, the, the same department that shoots and kills this guy, whatever the circumstances are, is the one who call who, who's supposed to show up and maintain order. I can I can understand and empathize with somebody who's like, you know what, I would prefer to not have these same people telling me what's right and what's wrong. And if there was competition in the area of uh, security as opposed to one monopolistic organization that uh, that chooses that, that mm-hmm. is chosen for you, then maybe people would be able to call some other agency. Yeah, maybe they would be less likely to go out and destroy property if they knew that all they had to do if they weren't happy with the services was not fund the services anymore and that they wouldn't have men with guns coming after them for not paying those taxes. Hey, thanks, David, for the call tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. Toll-free number 855-453. Michael is listening in South Carolina to WRNN in Myrtle Beach. Go ahead, Michael. Um, I, I guess I have a, a comment and then a question. You guys were asking who some of the black leaders are from the prior caller, 
And I think a lot of the people that flock to publicity driven tragedies like this and give press conferences on the news, whether it be Jesse Jackson or Al Sharpton, they kind of define themselves as the black leaders. Um, well, not that's ridiculous, isn't that. it? I mean, if, if you let somebody— I've never met a black person that says— the ones on TV. Yeah. Well, I understand, but I've never met a black person that says, yes, Jesse Jackson's my leader. I understand, but they're the ones that show up on TV and, and make this. I don't think we'd be talking about the same issue if it was a white cop shooting a white 18-year-old or a black cop shooting a black 18-year-old. So it does become a race issue. I'm and not claiming it's not a race issue. I'm simply claiming that this non this this nonsense about black leaders is nonsense. It's intended to drive a wedge because you've got these clowns like Sharpton and um, uh, J- Jackson out there, uh, you know, performing for the cameras. Mm-hmm. And they, you're right, they chase the go around the globe, but certainly around uh, the country, looking for the news. There's no doubt about it. But I don't think. That there's too many black people that are like, yeah, right on, give it to them, Al. I I just don't think there are. They certainly have their follow uh, their fans, uh, but you know that that would be like saying that David it, Duke has his fans. Sure, and is, is he, he a, white, is he a leader? white leader? Yeah, exactly. Michael, anything else you want and to share? Then, well, then the other issue you guys have talked a couple of times about the democracy that we live in. That is their right to speak up if they don't like how something's going. You talk about a victimless crime or whatever. It doesn't matter. It's not a cop's job to decide what crimes to enforce. Oh, yes, it is. The police it absolutely is no, the cop's job. If it's illegal, they are to enforce it. No, nope, I'm sorry. You don't know the whether, law. They have discretion. Yeah, the cop always they has discretion. discretion. If marijuana is illegal, they have discretion. It's still illegal. They don't, they're not designed or they're not supposed to look the other way. If you, the voters think it should be legal, then they need to legalize well, first it. First of all, in my, I'm like sorry, in my doing, ideal world, the cop is supposed to make a judgment because I want a, uh, a police officer who's going to know that bad laws exist and will have the independence to be able to think about the laws and judge them rather than just blindly enforcing bad laws. That would be protection. I thank you for the call, Michael. Toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. The blind enforcement of laws. Bad laws. The the, the blind enforcement of bad laws has been a real scourge on humanity over the years. All the way back to, of course, you know, slaves escaping in the South and then people returning them by force. We talk live. Global warming purports rising CO2 levels while evolution describes mutated DNA. The fraudulent sciences describe effects of iron poisoning and copper depletion. As generations are iron poisoned and copper deprived, the DNA has mutated and weakened as blood types A, B, and O. These blood types and rhesus factor are falsely used as evidence of evolution. Humans were created solely with blood type A, B negative. Fraudulent science purports mutated DNA coupled with rising CO2 levels in blood, are causing humans to go into extinction. In truth, humans are being methodically exterminated by iron poisoning and copper depletion. Blood type AB is on the Shroud of Turin and matches the healthy population. They claim this is evidence. They are from the line of Christ and thus are his Christ. They are from the lines that were disinherited 2,000 years ago, and now they claim to be his Christ. For further information, go to unveilingthem.com. That is U-N-V-E-I-L-I-N-G them.com. Unveilingthem.com. Did you agree? Did you totally agree? I'll bet that you did. But did you read the agreement? There are 7 billion people on Earth, and there are over 6 billion active cell phone accounts right now. And every one of them came with an agreement. Billions have already agreed to allow entities that they do not know to use and abuse every feature of their mobile devices. Your computer activity is monitored and archived. Your car is tracked and even your face is scanned. The current power structure grows more fearful every day of your desire for anonymity, independence, free association, freedom of movement, freedom of expression, and your freedom of thought. And entire categories of humans will be targeted. And if they, them, those that won't leave us alone, determine that we are not within their control, then we will be categorized as out of control. FreedomsPhoenix.com will launch the next phase of the Levolution by the end of the summer of 2014. And if you have to tell your neighbors about it, then we did it wrong. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you 
want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too. Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com I am a non-attorney spokesperson. Attention men who've taken Androgel or any other testosterone therapy products. Androgel or other low-T products have been linked to heart attack, stroke, pulmonary embolism, deep vein thrombosis, even death. Scientific studies indicate that the use of testosterone therapy products may double a man's risk of heart attack. If you or a loved one took Androgel or a testosterone therapy product and suffered from a heart attack, stroke, pulmonary embolism, deep vein thrombosis, or any other cardiac event, you might be entitled to financial compensation. You have rights, and you need to let us fight for your rights. And you pay no fees unless we win. So call the Tort Attorneys right now. 800-708-7917. 800-708-7917. 800-708-7917. Cases may be referred to participating law firms in your jurisdiction. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. Ferguson, Missouri continues to bubble over with conflict between protesters, looters, and police. You can share your thoughts here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. Of course, the police state is on display there in Ferguson. Armored personnel character uh, characters, carriers, APCs, uh, Bearcat, MRAP, all kinds of uh, violence-looking things are on the streets, men with fatigues and guns. Uh, ordering people around, there was a story actually Wednesday night, it was a couple of uh, reporters, one from the Huffington Post, another from the Washington Post. The news media have been using a local McDonald's there uh, in Ferguson to kind of, this is their base of operations, if you will. There's, you know, there's Wi-Fi there and coffee, so the news, good. Yep. Be, the news guys are going to be there. And uh, the cops came in, they demanded everybody leave the McDonald's, and in the process managed to arrest themselves a couple of uh, reporters. So, oh, and then they were also tear gassing reporters as well. Well, there's video footage of the police shooting tear gas directly at uh, some reporters who were setting up a shot in Ferguson there. And that, those were all just from a couple nights ago. So who knows what went down last night? You know, the journalist leaders should uh, step up and have something to say about this. Well, in the case of the journalists, uh, they do have editors and their editors did step up and say something about it. But the point you're making here goes back to our conversation earlier about the idea there being black leaders. Are there white leaders? What does that even mean? I'm my own leader. And I think that's the way it is for most people. Um, I have found a product recently. It's called My Magic Mud, and it is an incredible product because not only does it remove stains from teeth, and it does so amazingly quickly. After one application, two minutes is all it takes to use My Magic Mud. Um, one application, and you'll see a difference. In four uh, uses, I my teeth were completely devoid of stains. Now, I drink a lot of coffee, and so, yep, I've got stains on my teeth. There's no doubt about it. My Magic Mud takes care of it. Also, if you've got uh, sensitivity, many people report that My Magic Mud helps with that. For people that don't like the taste of toothpaste, My Magic Mud is completely tasteless. They do have a mint variety, though. But well, the reason that I'll continue to use My Magic Mud from from now on, I don't care whether they advertise or not, the reason I'll continue to, to use them forever and ever is because my teeth feel cleaner even in the morning. There's no film on my teeth. You, because it has activated charcoal in it, it works just like a water filter, and it goes and it grabs things. It bonds to things. And those things it's bonding to, the bacteria in your mouth. If there's no bacteria, there's nothing to make your mouth grody. It's MyMagicMud.com. Yes, it is a black powder toothpaste. Funny looking, mymagicmud.com. 
I think that's half the fun, personally. In fact, it's all of the fun. Little, little boys and little girls love it. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I, maybe I just haven't grown up enough, Mark. I think it's a blast to cover your mouth in, in black when you're when you're brushing your teeth. It's just so different. It's so unique. Anyway, mymagicmud.com. Good stuff. Let's continue with your calls and thoughts here. By the way, Ferguson store owners saying there are no police, saying there's a lack of response. Looters in Ferguson, Missouri, this is according to foxnews.com, were met with little police resistance Friday night. Store owners said they were forced to protect their businesses with their own guns. Quote, I think the first message is to remind all law enforcement they're hired to serve and protect, and if they're going to sit back and watch looting, they're not serving us and they're not protecting us, said Pastor Robert White. Well, guess what? I uh, unfortunately have some more bad news for you. Um, Sorry to be the bearer of this, but they're there to serve and protect, not you, but they're masters in the state. They're there to serve and protect the politicians. They're there to serve and protect the city council. They're there to serve and protect the federal government, the state governments, the local governments. They're serving themselves with your money, and they're protecting their monopoly. That's what they're there to serve and protect. And every now and then they might actually stop a real criminal. That's great. You know, I appreciate it when they go after a real, real actual criminals. But here's people saying, look, you've got looters in the streets. What are the police doing? Well, Repl- in this, a lot of cases, this isn't the individual police officers. This is the uh, administrations, how they're uh, being assigned. Mm-hmm. So if an individual police officer is assigned to do sort of riot duty and stand in a phalanx right. or whatever and he says you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go protect the uh, 7-eleven over there well, he's gonna get in big trouble so i just want to point out that in many cases we're not I, I think that the corruption in police departments because they're monopolies monopolies uh historically have always provided cor- poor, poor customer service mm-hmm. the, that corruption tends to come from the top down well, we can continue this here in a moment, but let's go to you and your calls and thoughts. Uh, first, starting out with Carl, listening in Atlantic City to WPG. Hey, Carl. Thanks, gentlemen, Welcome. for taking my call. Yeah. Uh, the Attorney General, Eric Holder, I think, sent the FBI in. And I think the scientific evidence will prevail. They'll find out if there's DNA under whoever's fingernails, unless the police officer was wearing gloves. They could possibly find out who was choking, who was really being choked, which one of them was being choked. I, I don't know. And then you have the grand jury. I think they'll indict, and then it'll go to the jury. That's that's the system we have in this country, and hopefully they'll have it on TV, and I can watch it, and I can see the scientific Hold proof. Hold on. You think the there. grand jury is going to indict on this, on, on the, the murder of Michael Brown? I think they will. Well, they, you know, I appreciate they, your they, optimism. I don't think yeah, they will. I think yeah. this guy's going to get off. Wow. I think that uh, he's going to. He's right now. He's enjoying a, uh, a paid vacation. That's the the man who's alleged to have shot Michael Brown, the police officer. I think his name is right. Darren. Um, that he is enjoying a paid vacation, and then eventually, once the investigation closes, the internal investigation, they will likely come back and they will say that well. It looks like our officer uh, believed that Michael Brown was in possession of cigars, which would have made him a, right. uh, you know, that he was fleeing from oh, of course a you could, uh, robber. Yeah, that he was yeah, a robber. Was a but, robber, of course, it wasn't okay. a fel- maybe it wasn't a felony. I don't know. There, uh, then again, it was supposedly a strong arm robbery, and then there was an allegation earlier right. that he actually slammed somebody, which is the first time I heard that. Have either of you heard the allegation that uh, the robber of the liquor store actually physically uh, attacked someone in the store. Hence I have the, heard that, yep. Hence the term strong arm. So well, that would I, probably make it a felony, would it not? Yeah, I think so. The guy that I saw in the photo, the little, he was a pretty little guy, and the guy that was kind of attacking him in the photo, he was a big guy, that's for sure. It'd be like, um, it'd be like somebody 300 pounds, six foot four taking me on. I wouldn't mm-hmm. have a chance. <laughs> Carl, anything else you want to share with us tonight? Uh, no, but I think tomorrow night I want to call and talk about windmills cool. in New you Hampshire do that. and New Jersey. Anytime I you will. want, we're here for you seven nights a week. Thanks, Carl, for the call tonight. Even if you don't get us on your local talk station seven nights a week, we're, we're here uh, seven to ten at night Eastern time. We are doing Free Talk Live. So uh, whether you're listening live or listening later, you can always call when we're live and you can hear yourself in our podcast or on the radio, etc. You can take control here, even if it's your first time tonight, although the phones are slammed. Uh, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Uh, more from the Fox News story here. We're going to jump back into your calls. But a, reporter's twe- uh, a reporter from the uh, station there, and one of the radio stations or TV stations, I'm not real clear, Fox, the Fox station uh, there in the Ferguson area, 
reporter from the station tweeted that police cars were seen driving past some of the stores being looted and did not respond. And it rained in Ferguson well, they don't on Friday want, night. Generally, don't want to respond unless they have a, a, a force that's in excess of the amount of people that are doing the looting. Well, I, I think that, uh, Mark, I, I understand where you're coming from on that. There, there are all kinds of reasons for the police to not take action. And the claim that officer safety is paramount is a very common claim when it comes to the police. The reason why the police didn't rush in at the Columbine shooting was because they had to make sure their officers were safe. They weren't really concerned about the kids. <laughs> they weren't really concerned, in this case, about the stores being looted. They're concerned about their own safety. So, again, are these the great paladins of justice out there to keep you and I safe? Once or again, what are they? Once again, that is standard operating procedure handed down by the brass. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I can tell you when I wanted to go as a firefighter, when I wanted to go and drag a guy out of a, a vehicle that I thought was smoking sitting next to a fire, not a fire, a, a gas hydrant, a gas uh, pumping thing, that my chief said, Mark, don't you go in there? Uh, you know, he was very clear that mm -hmm. I shouldn't go in until we had enough people. And he's probably right that I couldn't drag that guy was 320 pounds. I couldn't drag him out by myself. Well, I understand you're not making excuses for them, Mark. But uh, when people expect the police to do something and they're seen driving by the scene of people pulling stuff out through a storefront window uh, in, you know, just ragging equipment out. There's a there's a picture that was taken of a couple guys busting into a store there or they're coming out of the store they'd busted into with a huge like saw. Like a big piece of equipment just dragging the thing out of there. So, yeah, just at least just driving on by. 855 450 free. You can take control here and bring up whatever is on your mind. This is the live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live. More from Ferguson, where, by the way, the curfew goes into effect in approximately four hours. This is Free Talk Live. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. In a far future universe, Earth's fleet is shattered, rife with guerrilla warfare, interspecies diplomacy, and full-scale interstellar combat. Humanity is about to face its trial by fire. Trial by Fire, book two in the tales of the Terran Republic, sequel to the national best-selling and award-winning Fire with Fire by distinguished professor and author Charles Gannon. Get it now from Amazon through shop.freetalklive.com. Policies issued by American General Life Insurance Company, Houston, Texas. Not available in all states. For details, visit AIGdirect.com. It takes a lot of courage to face your own death, but I'm glad I finally did. See, I was putting off getting life insurance to protect my family, even though I knew it was important. Then my neighbor's husband died. I watched her struggle emotionally and financially. It really made me face reality. If my husband died, how would I pay the mortgage, the car payments, or keep up the life the kids and I had? I realized I needed to get us life insurance right away. So I called AIG Direct. In less than five minutes, I had a quote. I was shocked at how affordable it is. Just $14 a month for $250,000 of term life coverage. I feel so much better knowing my family has protection. Call AIG Direct right now for a free no-obligation quote. The call takes less than five minutes, and you can save up to 70%. Call now, 1-800-463-7479. That's 1-800-463-7479. 1-800-463-7479. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company Founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. 
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Aren't you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Well, stop using their money. There's an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. And by using their money, you're helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, live Saturday edition of the show. You take control of the airwaves. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. So some people apparently were uh, looting in Ferguson last night, uh, yesterday when we were talking on the program here on Free Talk Live's Friday edition. uh, When we were talking about this issue, we covered it pretty deeply for a couple of hours. And the last we'd heard out of Ferguson was that things were calm, the protests were happy, they were jubilant uh, earlier in the day, and then apparently night fell and things dramatically changed with more looting uh, happening and now a curfew being installed in the city, apparently just for tonight, at least for now, it's going to go into effect at midnight central time, going through 5 a.m. on Sunday morning. Our toll-free number here tonight is 855-450-FREE. As we continue with your calls and thoughts, let's go first to Jeff. He's listening in Charleston, West Virginia, to WVTS. Hey, Jeff. Hey, how you doing there? Welcome, sir. You're on the air. Well, what I was going to say is the police, you know, they act like the Gestapo in this situation. Um, uh, you know, these people listening to you there, I want them to know how they treat the black people out there is basically how they're going to be treated. I think they don't, you know, they don't look at it that way, but that's the way it is. And then on the other side, um, I know this, this black he, this black man, he was shot, and it's a tragedy. But you've got these other blacks that are extorting this tragedy where they can loot stores. And then you bring in the uh, the Black Panthers, and they're like the Ku Klux Klan of the blacks. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just want to make that comment there. Yeah, I mean, it's no. there's no justification. I don't care what your skin color is. There's no justification for if somebody gets shot by the police, you go out and then destroy people's private property. It just doesn't make any sense. If you want to go and protest— and shout and, you know, break stuff, at least go out in front of the police station, you know, at least go Nobody's going to do that. <laughs> right. Go to where the problem is coming from, not the poor bastard who owns the 7-Eleven. Right. If you're running down the street with a big screen TV, you're the problem, not yeah, the solution. No doubt. Jeff, thanks for sharing your thoughts tonight, man. I do appreciate it. Let's continue here. We've got John. He's in Columbus, Ohio. You're on Free Talk Live, John. Hey, how you guys doing? Welcome, sir. Hey, I've been listening to you for a long time, first time I've ever called in, but I, I was, there was a good comment there about the, uh, the young lady who, when you asked her who were the white leaders, and I agree with you too, wholeheartedly. My brother-in-law once told me, he said, if I get in trouble, don't call Sharpton or Jackson. Said, don't call <laughs> them. They're, I feel the same way. They are not my leaders. They sure as hell aren't going to bail get, you out. Yeah. <laughs> They get out there in, in, in the public and grandstand, and they're doing it for their own profit. They're, they're not helping. I mean, there was a time way back, I think, that you know they did serve a purpose, but I don't think they are really serving the purpose of the people. They're just point. serving themselves, aren't they? Exactly. Yeah, it, 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 that's what it is. Yeah, you know? it's about it's Jesse like, Jackson, you know, and it's about Al Sharpton. That's what it is. It's about promoting their, their brand, essentially. No, so they're, they're, the, they're the Hannity's and Beck's of... For, for the black folks, they're, they're the same, one and the same, you know, so, but, you know, whenever, like you call, you ask the lady, who's the, who are white leaders? She couldn't answer that question. No, of course so not. She's got upset about it. Yeah, they, yeah. She's John, I'm going to go out on a limb right? here uh, you, and say you may be a black man. Uh, you might be right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's a, 
I mean, and how common is your viewpoint? I mean, amongst your neighbors, the people you know who are also black, like, are they, uh, do people just generally reject Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton? And are they just amazed that uh, yet they continue to be called black leaders? I mean, it probably, you know, any news talking head program, they'll probably put under their name on the screen, black leader, you know, as though that makes it true. Now you know there there are some people that do that that do follow them like you said they're their fans but yeah mm-hmm. I, a lot of people that I, in my circle feel the same way as I do that you know they're they're not our leaders they're spokespeople and and a lot of times they're serving corporate interests you know absolutely Trump takes money from certain big big corporations he's not going to go against them if if they're doing something against our interests because that's, you know, he's biting the hand that feeds him. He's not going to do that. These are also, um, both of those guys are very socially conservative individuals. They've got political agendas like Mm -hmm. everybody does. And they, they tend to be fiscally liberal and socially conservative. Um, And uh, that doesn't match up. Authoritarian. Yeah. yeah, They're authoritarians. (laughs) That doesn't match up in many ways with, with the many in the black community at all. If there is a black community, whatever that means. Glad to hear you guys ask that question, you know, because that that's that's something that no, nobody ever calls them on. Well, who if there if the blacks have leaders, who are our leaders? Right, so exactly. I, I, that was. Thanks, John. I really do appreciate your call and the thoughts tonight. Yeah, and, and you know, if we're not if we're ever not hitting the point you think that we need to be making, call in and uh, hit it harder here. Toll free, 855-450-FREE. And, of course, it sounds a lot better coming from a guy who's black. right? I mean, we can make our statement earlier about, well, who's the white leader? But when a guy who is black can call in and say, look, I want nothing to do with these people. Be like us, say, you know, somebody saying, well, you guys are talk show hosts, so Rush Limbaugh is your leader, or Rush Limbaugh's <laughs> the white leader. You know, it's just ridiculous just because he's got a microphone. Phone and people pay attention well, uh, well, to. Well, I don't have a color. You, you're the one who's uh, white over here. I just don't have a color. Well, I like that, Mark. That's uh, that's a nice thing. I like being the human race. That's a good one. Uh, but let's continue with your calls and thoughts. We've got Dave listening in Virginia to WLNI Lynchburg. Hey, Dave. Hey guys, how you doing tonight? What's on your mind tonight? Uh, you know this whole Ferguson thing. Um, I'm a former officer who was involved in the shooting, and um, on both sides of this, um, I see both sides. Um, what I'm concerned about, and this is something I've always said, uh, how about we, before we have a reaction, how about we wait for all the facts to come out? And, um, you know, as terrible as things are, it looks bad, it was uh, an unarmed kid. Uh, why don't we wait to see what came out? I you like know, that was- concept. I wonder whether it is practical in dealing with human beings. And here's in the, the information reason. age? Well, yeah. well here's, here's the reason. Um, in 1942, hold, hold on, I'm sorry, it was 1944. In 1944, the Russians executed a bunch of uh, Poles and blamed it on uh, the Germans. Well, we didn't find out for 60 years later. Mm. I'm not sure that anyone took to the streets in uh, Warsaw in order to protest this when we finally found out the truth. Um, Kent State, we found out three decades later that there were agents provocateur in the crowd that started throwing rocks that gave the uh, National Guard the opportunity to shoot. Well, no one took to the streets at that point. It was just information to be had. Okay. Well, that's why there's trials. That's why there's an investigation. That's why the internal affairs is going to do their job. Um, And if the internal affairs of the department can't handle it, that's when they send it to the state police or now that the FBI is involved. Believe me, they're going to get everything. They're going to get everything that they need to get, and that's when they release it. You know, I'll, I'll bring it to a civilian side. Uh, the George Zimmerman trial, as bad as that looked, okay. Uh, of course, the pictures that the news media showed of the kid was, you know, he was 12 years old. Uh, the, the pictures that they showed of him was 12 years old. Nice, bright, smiling boy. They didn't show his Facebook profile picture where, you know, he was given the middle finger with gang pats all over him. Uh, and when it came out in the trial. And I watched that trial. I watched the police officers while they were on the stand for the prosecution were practically corroborating and testifying for George Zimmerman. Well, the thing so with this, it, Dave, it, I mean, with the, the thing with it, this, back to the Ferguson situation, people are going to make decisions based on the information that has been given. And even with whatever the facts might be here, let's say that the allegations are true. Let's say the young man did the worst case thing. He went into the store. You know, he threw somebody to the ground f- firmly with violence and stole a $50 box of cigars. 
that to mm-hmm. me, and then allegedly attacked uh, the police officer, had some sort of a scuffle with the police officer. To me, those things still don't deserve a shot in the back at 35 uh, feet away. Well, um, let ballistics do the work, and let's let's stop assuming first. Let's stop assuming. Let's let well, that, the claim work. that he was shot in the back has yet to be contradicted by any official source that I have seen. So, you know, we're obviously um, going, it's true, we're all operating on what people say happened. Um, but we can still look at the worst case scenario based on what people are saying and come to a conclusion based on that. Well, they also said that they also said that uh, uh, Trayvon Martin was, a, it was an angelic little six, uh, 17 year old, too. Okay, so let's let's look at. But that the doesn't have anything to do with the facts in the case, right? Like whether Trayvon oh, Martin was an angelic oh, sixteen-year-old doesn't have oh, anything to does. do with what this happened guy, between him guy, and George. If Zimmerman. this guy just did a strong-arm robbery, it explains the reason why he would go after an officer's gun in a scuffle. And if that's what happened, was he going after his gun from thirty-five feet away? The question is. Away. Have you, is there a video of him running away at thirty-five feet? Because the only the well, only Dave, Dave, nope, just they, that's what I've been saying all night, Dave. What I've been saying all night is, why don't we have... But wait a second, Dave. Let me run this by you. I've been saying all night, what we need to have as citizens, voting uh, citizens, we need to have all the information. And all the information would mean, uh, you know, dash-mounted, officer-mounted cameras that are loaded directly to the Internet so they would have this information rather than everybody guessing. We can do this today. Like it's to just the police departments you, don't want to do it. I'd like to hear what do you, you think? Yeah, I would like to hear how you feel on. about that, Dave. Hang on. We can bring it back. Uh, coming up here in the next hour, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Dave, I think he said was a former officer. Yeah. In and involved uh, in a shooting. So we'll get his opinion on officer cameras coming up. It's Free Talk Live. Hi, Chuck Woldery here. I don't know about you, but I don't like taking pills for minor arthritis pain, and I don't like those patches either. But I have found something that works, Australian Dream Arthritis Pain Relief Cream. It's a great product. It doesn't smell or burn, isn't greasy, and it works. And Australian Dream has an empty jar guarantee. You can use the whole jar, and if you're not happy, you get your money back. But I doubt you'll send it back. This stuff really works. Australian Dream is now available at Target or your favorite retail store. Lots of things change in life. Here's one thing that has it. For over 20 years, Lumber Liquidators has been the home of unbelievable flooring deals. And right now, those deals are even better. Take your pick of gorgeous pre-finished hardwoods like cherry, oak, and hickory. Or an incredible 149 a square foot. Plus, loads of major hardwood flooring brands at a crazy 40% off. Even get great deals on laminate, bamboo, and vinyl floors. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. Special 12-month financing available. But hurry, the sale ends Tuesday. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates. Online at LibertyBeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, August 15th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,304, silver opened at $19.60, and Bitcoin is trading around $509.33. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. Online at rrbi.co or by phone at 800-874-9760. In the news, on Thursday, Missouri Governor Jane Nixon announced the Missouri State Highway Patrol will handle policing of Ferguson, Missouri. The site of large protests and police violence since a police officer shot 18-year-old Mike Brown to death on Saturday. 
News Channel 5 also reported the FBI would be taking over the investigation into the shooting. The FBI will handle all operations, protests, and other activities. Local police will operate under the direction of the FBI. Governor Nixon said the police should release the name of the officer accused of shooting Brown. Nixon also stated that Ferguson resembled a war zone. On Thursday, press freedom organizations held a press conference in support of New York Times reporter James Risen. The U.S. Department of Justice is attempting to compel Risen to testify against former CIA employee Jeffrey Sterling, who they accuse of leaking classified information to Risen. Risen is the author of the 2006 book State of War, which describes the CIA's efforts to interrupt the Iranian nuclear program. The groups presented a petition of more than 100,000 signatures asking the Justice Department to quit their pursuit of Risen. If Risen does not testify against Sterling, he will face jail time and fines. The conference was organized by the Committee to Protect Journalists, the Freedom of the Press Foundation, the Government Accountability Project, the Reporters Committee for Freedom of the Press, and Reporters Without Borders. An eBay subsidiary, Braintree Payments, is exploring Bitcoin acceptance. The Wall Street Journal reports, Braintree Payments is part of PayPal, which is owned by eBay. PayPal executives have reportedly been meeting with Coinbase, a Bitcoin merchant processor, about accepting Bitcoin on the Braintree network. At this time, no agreements have been made. eBay CEO John Donahoe has hinted at the potential for Bitcoin integration in the past. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Brave New Books, your local source for all things Bitcoin. Now hosting a Bitcoin ATM. Located in Austin, Texas at 1904 Guadalupe Street or online at bravenewbookstore.com. And support comes from the notorious activist Michael Cargill. He has a new show called Come and Talk It, live Sunday afternoons, 4 p.m. on 1370 a.m. in Austin. That's 1370 a.m. Sundays at 4. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, August 15th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. A former Egyptian interior minister has claimed the United States was warned by Egypt of attacks several times before September 11, 2001, and that the U.S. was responsible for the 2011 Egyptian revolution. Habib al Adlai served under former Egyptian President Mubarak. Speaking at his retrial in Cairo, Egypt, al Adlai stated that Egypt received information in May 2001 regarding an impending attack. He said the CIA and FBI were both contacted these statements corroborate a report by the Associated Press from December 7th of 2001, where Mubarak claims to have warned the U.S. of an attack. Aram Online reports that El Adlai also stated the U.S. had a two-part plan to covertly overthrow the Egyptian government. He claims the Egyptian government was told to accept a democratic model and financial incentives, or be accused of being dictators. El Adlai said the U.S. worked to mobilize the youth to revolt and create revolution. The peace and freedom movement is alive and well. No matter what corner of the country you reside in, there are events happening all month long. Today through the 17th, the first annual Pacific Northwest Freedom Festival is being held in Chehalis, Washington. Also today through the 17th, the second annual Vermont Freedom and Unity Festival. Adam Kokesh is headlining at the Magic Mountain Ski Area in Londonbury, Vermont. Now tomorrow there is the March on CNN, Stop the Genocide in Gaza. Protesters will meet on Hollywood and Vine in Los Angeles at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And August 22nd through the 25th, the second annual Midwest Peace and Liberty Festival in Circle Pine Center in Delta, Michigan will happen. Check out the LibertyBeat.com for links to all of these events. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Cabo Bob's, non-GMO chips, homemade tortillas, and no high fructose corn syrup in anything. Visit them at one of their two locations in Austin, 500 East Ben White Boulevard, and 2828 Rio Grande near the UT campus. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, August 15, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Officials for the Centers for Disease Contraction and Preservation held a press conference urging all Americans to suck on as many doorknobs as possible. This flu season, the Center for Disease Contraction is recommending that all Americans, regardless of age or health condition, find a doorknob in a high traffic area, wrap their mouths around it, and vigorously lick and suck it until they contract an illness. We recommend sucking doorknobs covered in a visible film of human hand grease. But the fact is, sucking on any doorknob can increase the likelihood 
likelihood of exposing yourself and your family to deadly pathogens by as much as 450%. An instructional video released on the CDC's website showcases the proper method for sucking doorknobs while also providing tips for projecting all sneezes and coughs outward, sharing used Kleenexes and toilet paper with as many people as possible, eating three meals a day from local garbage cans, and dozens of other easy bacteria spreading activities. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you want here on this live Saturday edition. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Uh, We've been talking pretty much all night about Ferguson, Ferguson, Missouri, where, of course, if you haven't been paying attention to the news about a week ago, uh, there was a shooting involving a young man, 18 years old, and a police officer. Uh, The officer has finally been identified. I think his name was, uh, was it Darren? I don't have it in front of me. Anyway, the officer allegedly shot this man in the back as he was running away from a scene The allegation was that the man who was shot had stolen some cigars earlier, not too long, not too long prior to the shooting, uh, but stolen some cigars in a strong arm robbery of a local convenience store or liquor store. The officer claims that uh, allegedly claims that, uh, that he saw cigars in the man's hand and that he was walking down the street blocking traffic. He stopped him. Basically, he claimed for that reason there was an alleged scuffle near the officer's car, and at some point the uh, young man was running from the officer when he was shot in the back, allegedly. So these are some of the the details that surround the story. We uh, we have a police officer, a former officer, on the line with us. He did wait through the breaks or the uh, the news breaks. Yeah, thanks for that. that. Uh, We're going to bring Dave back on here. He's saying, Dave is saying, let's wait until all the information comes in uh, before making up our minds about things. But I don't have to do that because... I can look at the worst case scenario according to the witnesses, according to the statements that are being made and have not been contraindicated in any way, shape, or form about this man being shot in the back, and I can draw conclusions. And if new information comes along, I can redraw new conclusions. But at that, that wasn't point. the question I asked Dave on the way out. No. The it question wasn't. I asked Dave was is what do you think about officer mounted cameras? vehicle-mounted cameras that uh, upload directly to the Internet. The Rialto, California Police Department had uh, p- mounted cameras on police officers. They saw an 80 percent reduction in complaints about uses of force. They saw a 66% reduction in uses of force simply by having these cameras. Dave, your thoughts as a former I, officer? I have absolutely no problem with it, honestly. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I, I mean, if technology allows, yeah, I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it's a great. I think it's a great training tool for future officers that come on that come on the job. Uh, I think that. Um, I think that it would uh, instill a little bit more trust within the within the civilian population. A lot more trust. Um, because that's well, all I yeah. want to do is trust police officers. Right. Uh, you know, on top, of, but the, uh, on the other hand. You know, when somebody does have to get put on the ground, they have to get put on the ground. When somebody yep. does have to get shot, they have to get shot. And you have to understand that. It's, you know, I, I'm not going to ask you nicely yep. when you've got a knife at me, coming at me. I'm not going to ask you nicely. I'm going to tell you to either drop the knife or mm-hmm. you're going to get hit. There's no and doubt that if there's doing. an immediate danger, and then officers are certainly uh, understandably able to respond to that immediate threat. However, when a man is running away at 35 feet, uh, you couldn't possibly claim that you felt threatened by that, that right? That is, yes, that's what I've heard. That's what the only, the sole witness said happened. The sole witness the also left out that there was a, the, uh, the sole first witness there was one. that I've heard. Yeah, there was the one witness, whatever it was, said 35 feet, blah, blah. Uh, who knows? He also left out that, that there was a fight in the car between this guy and the cop. Right, well, he that's one of the things that's in dispute. And it, well, here, right. here's what I— So that's why I say, right. that's why I say let's let the information come out. Right, I, I mean, agree. Uh, let's let the investigation get done. And it, then once everything's out, because, it, yes, it, it, to me, it looks bad. An unarmed man was shot. In my yeah. situation, the guy was armed. It was a clear-cut case. It was either me or him. I came out on top, okay? By the grace of God, I'm alive and, and I'm talking to you guys right now. Yeah, good, and, good oh, yeah. for you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not taking anything away from my instructors. God bless them. 
But I'm Look, I know you what you're saying God. here is you're saying people, you know, shouldn't be jumping to what they're doing in the streets as a result of this because right. you don't know all of the facts. I get where you're coming from, and there's no doubt, right. you know, whatever the facts are, looting is inappropriate, violence is inappropriate. Exactly. I mean, that's all true. But at the same time, you have to account for the fact that many people in an urban in urban areas know that the police are not there in a lot of cases to help them and that, that when they see things like this happening in the streets you can't blame people for bubbling over with their ups, you know how upset people are uh, there so, are a lot hey, of really I, upset I people out there I understand that and I agree that hey people should be concerned and if you know what if they weren't awake if they weren't upset that's when I'd start to worry well the police you have know, done this to themselves to, we need to be the, the the police have uh, the the, no, the police have done this to themselves. Again, I'm not excusing okay. violence. I'm not excusing uh, the brass did by hiring thieves. a largely white force in a largely black area. You can keep area. blaming the brass mark, but the the underlings take the orders and they take them every single day. And they could go home if they didn't want to take those orders. So they they choose every single day to follow bad orders from the bad brass. So please don't just blame the brass in this particular case. Look, wow. The, see, I, when I was in the academy, when I was in the academy, I learned a thing called officer's discretion. So. I mean, I could I could either cut you a break or, or stick it to you if I really wanted to. Yep. You know, I mean, it was something as simple as, look, man, look, I caught you with a nickel bag of marijuana, okay? I could, if you're cool with me, I'll tell you what, I'll toss it in the gutter, man. Just get off the street tonight, okay? Now, if you gave me lip, I'll do some paperwork. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm glad you called about that day because there was somebody who called in earlier disbelieving our claim that officers had uh, full discretion to enforce. And I think they have, they have. They you can, you can. I mean, it's, it's uh, uh, the difference between a ticket and a, uh, and a and a warning on a traffic infringement or something like that, or is is a, a lot of it is attitude. A lot of people, man, they want to, they want to uh, just immediately. What are you pulling me over for? What are you doing this mm -hmm. for? What are you doing that for? Well, dude, uh, you were doing 15 miles an hour over the speed limit, and you blew through a red light and didn't use your turn signal, and you almost cut grandma off. Uh, come on, man. Good I mean, call tonight, strike Dave. Strike one, strike two, and strike three. Come on, guys. Thanks I mean, for calling. You know. Thanks for sharing the expertise. We do appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. But the point I was making about uh, the police sort of have brought this on themselves is that a lot of people – for a lot of good reason, are upset with the police. The police are enforcing bad laws in a lot of cases. Unfortunately, many police aren't using their discretion in the way that I would like to see them use it. I would like to see police use discretion on all laws that have no victim. Um, please stop enforcing those laws. If you stop enforcing victimless crime laws, officers, you'll find that all of a sudden people will start to trust you more. They'll be more likely to talk to you when you come to their neighborhood because they're not worried you're going to, oh, I don't know, arrest somebody because there's a bong left out on the on the table. Oh, well, you off, you invited the officer in to talk about a crime that happened? Somebody's house got robbed? Here, come on in, officer. What's that on the table there? Oh, you're under arrest, son. You know, that, that kind of stuff happens. And people have their lives ruined by the police. Like this insane war on drugs has destroyed countless millions of people's lives, or it may at least made people's lives more difficult by taking somebody who was productive and arresting them and taking them out of their job and making them lose their job, maybe lose their house. This all adds up over the years, you know, person after person, people are getting arrested within your family, within your group of friends. It starts to strike closer and closer to home. Maybe even you have been arrested as well. And a lot of it's for BS nonsense. And the more the police are out there arresting people for a bunch of bunk, a bunch of laws that have no victims, you're going to they're going to alienate people. They're going to alienate good members of the community who know their their brothers and sisters aren't criminals. They just, you know, smoke a little bit of pot or might have might have had some cocaine or some other kind of drug. They're not actual criminals. They haven't hurt anybody. So it just it adds and it adds. And now it's been decades, decades of this adding and adding and adding. And then well, some finally somebody, you know, some cop shoots a kid and then boom, you know, people blow up. Also, it's not excusing it. It's just explaining it. You're just talking about the drug war, which is a big is a big issue for you. Huge factor. No, it's a huge factor for urban communities as well. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. It's it's huge. Uh, drug The drug war is the new Jim Crow. I, I would absolutely agree with you on that. But let's not forget that now with technology like speed cameras, it uh, there's going to be a lot of animosity towards just speed enforcement by uh, law enforcement officers. Consider for a second that, um, you know, maybe... Many people consider speed limits to be too low where they are, so mm -hmm. they they um, consistently speed. You only get a ticket maybe once every five thousand, maybe ten thousand times you speed. 
So it doesn't teach anything. It's just another revenue stream for the government. There's a line item for uh, speeding violations. So what it ends up being is, is that when you have police officers, instead of little gizmos on the side of the road that give somebody a ticket every time, you can believe that people won't speed if there were speed cameras on the side of the road. I'm not advocating for it because I don't think the government does a very good job of road management generally. But I am pointing out that the other thing that cops mostly do, which is speed enforcement, is also, uh, it, you know, flashing lights on the side of the road is dangerous. Yeah, I say legalized speeding. 855-450 free. That's 855 450 They have reckless driving as a statute. So if you're driving dangerously, maybe there's an argument there. It's Free Talk Live. More coming up. This is Mark Edge of Free Talk Live, and I've got something awesome to share with you. I've recently joined Liberty.me. It's an online city devoted to people who love liberty. Break free of the flame wars and bridge-dwelling denizens of Facebook. You deserve better. You deserve a friendly, ad-free social network where you can chat 24 hours a day with like-minded souls around the world. Attend live interactive classes with experts on economics, finance, politics, and money. Access a vast library of books and discuss them with your reading group. Better your life with exclusive self-help guides on investing, self-defense, homeschooling, security, healthcare, saving money, and starting a business. Become a libertarian luminary yourself and get paid in the process by publishing your works on liberty.me. Get tipped via PayPal and Bitcoin. The first step towards freedom is to invest in yourself. Start your free 30-day trial now at liberty.me. I love being a member of liberty.me and I think you will too. The first month is free. Sign up and say hello. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call one 800 68 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on to join the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm.
This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Saturday edition, and you, of course we'll take your calls about anything you want to discuss, although Ferguson has been the hot topic tonight. A curfew is in place, or it will be in place here in about four hours. Midnight Central Time is when the curfew goes into effect in Ferguson all the way through 5 in the morning on Sunday. Uh, whether there will be another one on Sunday night remains to be seen. It depends on whether it works or not. Whatever that means, whatever it means for a curfew to work, I, you know, we didn't really dig into this idea a moment ago, but uh, just to to further uh, let you know, now we don't know the details on far as like, will you know, will they be stopping people going to work? Will people who are you know trying to get to their job, will they be allowed to go where they're going to go? Are they going to be tailed by the police? Just make sure they're telling the truth about where it is they're going. How detailed, you know, how uh, oppressive will this uh, this curfew actually end up being? But I think any level of curfew is a disturbing thing. I think it's an indicator that things are not as free as you might expect that they actually are. And, you know, when you physically cannot leave your home at night for fear that men with guns are going to put you in a cage for a while as a result of that, that should be an indicator. That should be a, you know, heads up that you might be living in a police state. Our toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. And, of course, curfews, by the way, also keep good people off of the streets. So when this curfew is in effect, you will see the police will certainly be out and about. And then there probably will be some criminal element folks who are going to be around. But the thing that keeps people safe on the streets in most places aren't the police. In fact, we saw this happen with uh, the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. After Katrina, people had been ordered to evacuate. And what what happened was once the good people of Louisiana or the you know, New Orleans area were told to leave, the good business owners, the good homeowners, they were ordered out. They were no longer around to defend their store. Are the people who are defending their stores going to be subject to the curfew as well? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. You can't stand here with that AK-47 defending your furniture store. You're going to have to go home now. It's curfew time. So you're taking the good people off of the streets as well. What if there's a neighborhood watch group that wants to go out and uh, and keep their streets safe in their neighborhood? They would also be prevented by this curfew from hitting the streets and making sure people are safe out there. So I think the curfew is a terrible idea. You're welcome to share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE as we continue here. We've got Dale. He's in Tennessee. Dale, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, y'all doing? Dale, you're on the air. Go ahead. All right. Hey, I want to express to y'all that being – I'm, I'm – 55 years old, I'm black, and I never recall electing anybody to be my particular leader. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go uh, old school and say, I ain't got no stinking leader. Right on. I mean, that that's ludicrous. And for some, and for, and the mindset that, that there is a, a black leader, a white leader. Now there are, there are people that, that use that uh, persona, whether it be political, uh, social and you know throughout the community, but that's far from re- that's far from what they, what they mean. They want the black leader to come out here and tell these people to stop. They have a much better opportunity if they were appealing to Beyonce to tell people to stop. <laughs> Than Why Jesse haven't Jackson. they got Be- Where is Beyonce? <laughs> yeah. Why hasn't Beyonce stepped up and taken a stand on Ferguson? Uh, Dale, good points tonight. Anything else you want to share with us? I mean, no, I yeah, y- y- y'all keep it up. Y- y'all do it. Y'all do a fantastic job, and uh, just 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 keep America listening. Y'all do great. We'll do Thanks. our best. Thanks, Thanks Dale. I appreciate your call and thoughts tonight. Toll free number eight fifty five four fifty free. Hey, you know. Uh, you heard it here. Um, Beyonce has not done her civic duty by stepping up and having something to say on Ferguson. So something I have to say is check out Bitcoin. The price is down a little bit right now. Maybe yeah. a good time to buy. It's what, around 500 something today? I'd have to Five. look, but it's something like that. Yeah, so it was around the 600 range a few days ago. You can go to blockchain.com to get your Bitcoin wallet tonight. It doesn't take more than a moment. You just sign up at blockchain.com. They've got uh, they've got apps for iPhone iOS devices as well as Android devices. And if you don't have a smartphone, you can use their web wallet as well at blockchain.com. 520. Oh, that's the price of the Bitcoin. Gotcha. All right. You're giving me hand signals. Like, what the hell? 5 2. I don't know why I try to mean? communicate with you. All right. So, uh, yeah, go to blockchain.com, get your free Bitcoin wallet right now or when you stop driving. 
Uh, let's go to your calls here. We continue with your thoughts. We've got Dolores. She's on the line in Pittsburgh, Virginia. Dolores, you're on Free Talk Live. <laughs> It's Pennsylvania. Hey, guys, oh, okay. I'm enjoying your show. And I would like to know, when do you ever hear of a black officer shooting an unarmed person? A black sure officer shooting happened. whom? An unarmed person. An unarmed white individual. I mean, when do you hear of that? And yeah, I'm all for the cameras. But seriously, when do you or when have you ever heard of such a thing? Well, let's assume I've never heard of it because I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Um, it's, surely it's happened somewhere because, you know, there's, seven, there's six billion, seven billion people on the planet. But mm -hmm. um, t what, what conclusion do you draw from it? Well, what I'm saying is, is that everything can't be someone reaching for an officer's gun. And everything can't be, oh, we got into a scuffle. But this is from what I've seen. There was the scuffle, the shot, then the shot allegedly in the back. Then when the gentleman turned around with his hands up, he was shot in the face, oh, the God. frontal part of the head, and then the thorso, the part of the chest, wow. the thoracic part of the chest. So you have that. But with all of that being stated, what's going on in America where it's okay? I'm a mother of two sons. I have brothers that are cops. I have individuals that did 20 years in the military. And when they look at their sons and say, this is the way you have to act, and they have served their country, don't you think we have a problem? Well, I, I think that the problem is obvious. What do you think Gentlemen, the problem is? Uh, well, sir, I do believe that they feel that their life is not worth it. And you wouldn't choke a man in broad daylight and asphyxiate him in broad daylight and think nothing about it unless you thought you can get away with it. So with that thing happening in New York, what is the difference in what that young man Oh, you're, man refer you're referring, just to clarify, you're referring to the uh, man in New York City who was choked to death by police in the process of him being uh, attacked over selling some Lucy's, some uh, some cigarettes. Exactly. Pretty outrageous he's stuff. Not the first. Exactly. So what I'm saying is, you guys do a beautiful show, and I enjoy the way you go, You guys go back and forth. But really, gentlemen, think about the fact that when do you hear about an officer? In all the 50 states, I'm sure it's happened. But when do you hear about a black officer, a black female, taking the life of a white, Asian, Mexican? When do you hear this? I don't know. Uh, you know what? I mean, we're not this. in every city, right? So it's something I, to think about, though. Yeah. It's a, thank you for bringing that up tonight, Dolores. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Uh, you know, there are certain cities where uh, there are probably more blacks on the department. In Ferguson, apparently there were three blacks. Now, Ferguson was what? 70% black, I think, is the number? I I've thought heard. it was higher than that. I've heard it's 65, 70% black, and their police department is definitely not 70% black. 80% not. So, <laughs> mm, 855, 450 free. What does that tell you? 855, 450, 3733. You take control here. This is Free Talk Live's live Saturday show. My Magic Mud is a tooth whitening powder that removes plaque and detoxifies your mouth. It's safe for your enamel, giving you a beautiful polish and a dentist-like clean after every use. My Magic Mud is also the perfect remedy for pain caused by sensitivity. It strengthens your teeth and gums for a strong, healthy smile. The ingredients are 100% natural and it's safe for children. Simply brush with My Magic Mud right before bedtime for a cleaning you can count on. Visit MyMagicMud.com. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. 
Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at Keenvention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit Keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. Have you ever wanted to help a hardworking person get their business off the ground? Then join me in enjoying some BuzzBox coffee. Let's make a difference one cup at a time. Join us in helping people buy their own coffee farms through at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Free Talk Live coffee drinkers will truly change lives forever. To get the best coffee you've ever tasted, it's organic, shade-grown, and top 1% Arabica grade. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. The first pound's free, just cover shipping. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. All experts agreed this week that the dying U.S. economy is no reason at all to stop investing in print media. Calling the newspaper and magazine industry a veritable cash cow with massive potential for growth, top experts everywhere said that aggressive investment in print media will pay off in spades and that newsprint is in no way threatened by internet news sites or online video content. Besides, everyone in the know agreed, loyal readers of newspapers would never, ever in a million years turn their back on the trusted print media industry that has always been been there for them in good times and bad. This is the Onion News Network. It's the Onion Radio News. I'm Doyle Redland. Cardiologists announced today that test subjects who took a single aspirin tablet followed by a fifth of bonded Kentucky bourbon were 85% less likely to realize they were having a heart attack. Potential side effects for the new treatment include slurred speech, impaired vision, and vomiting. Doyle Redland for the Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. You are invited here to bring up anything that you want. It is the live Saturday edition, and the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy all the features there for free. Those other talk show hosts, they want to charge you for accessing their websites. Ours, we give away. You'll probably find more for free at freetalklive.com than you would get if you paid for those other sites on those uh, you know, those other big name talk show hosts that want to charge you seven or eight bucks a month. We do it for free at freetalklive.com. And of course, we ask that you check out some of our great sponsors like BuzzBox, who give you a great reason to check them out, a free pound of some of the best coffee. Yeah, if you go to coffee.freetalklive.com, you can get a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's shade grown. That's great for people that get that kind of acid reflux deal from uh, coffee because, well, frankly, those sun-grown Robusto beans, they're not the same as shade-grown coffee. Coffee was meant to be grown in the shade. Um, it's 100% organic, and that's important when you're looking at uh, you know countries where maybe they don't have the same rules on pesticide or they use leaded gas. I'm not sure exactly what happens when a plant grows in soil that has, you know, lead in it from the exhaust of cars burning leaded gas, but I'd prefer not to find out because lead's a pretty bad thing. <laughs> uh, top 1% grade Arabica beans, that's the best of the best. It's available to you for a free pound to try it out. It's a subscription. You can cancel it any time. But what I want you to know is after you get your free pound is that if you continue to get your coffee from buzz, um, from coffee.freetalklive.com through BuzzBox, is that you're helping us help people around the world get micro loans to have a better life for themselves. So for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, another person can get another micro loan to get, I don't know, a plow or a sewing machine or a bicycle or whatever it is they need to 
make a better life for themselves. It's coffee.freetalklive.com. All right, let's jump back into your phone calls and thoughts. A lot of people are concerned with what's going on in Missouri with the police shooting in Ferguson uh, of a young man, uh, 18 years old, and there's whatever the details are around that. Uh, allegedly, he was shot in the back, and that just seems to be an inappropriate response to pretty much anything. I mean, to back shoot, shooting, not good. Yeah. Shoot a guy in the back, and of course. The larger issues have been uh, discussed as well. The question of, well, why does crime happen uh, in the first place, especially among young males and, the, you know, larger issues of the police state. And, you know, you can get into anything you want here. So let's jump into your calls. 855 free. Let's go to Scott first in Wilmington, Delaware. Uh, Scott, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, how you doing? Hey, you're on the air. Well, uh, this is my take on the whole situation. Now, Evidently, they verified that the video where the the young kid that was shot uh, was in the store and he did a strong arm robbery. They verified that that was in fact him. It, it How did they verify that? Well, that, that's what they're reporting on the news that the police have verified that that was him. Well, I'm sure the police would like you to believe oh. that that was him. I don't know if just because they have video means that it was actually well, him. The, the police and witnesses and the and the store clerk. Uh, evidently, has verified that that was him. Okay, so okay. <laughs> not just okay. So that being said, uh, if if that was him, then he's not a good guy. He's not. He's he's a, he's a thug and a bully, as yep. is evident in in the, in the video. Uh, if he did that strong home robbery, if in fact it was him. Okay, so he's not a good guy. He's a thug and a bully. So it's not too much of a stretch. To think that he assaulted the police officer, and or he tried to grab a police officer's gun. Now, let me finish before you before you cut mm-hmm. me off. If you go, if you grab a try to grab a police officer's gun, or if you try to grab anyone's firearm, they have a legal right to kill you. A legal right to kill you. If you go, for how long try after? To take a gun, but let me finish. Okay. Let me finish. If you go try to pull someone's gun from them. They have a legal right to kill you. That being said, uh, the officer may have been assaulted. They say there was a shot that was fired in the vehicle. If that's the case, there should be a bullet hole in the roof of the vehicle mm-hmm. during the scuffle. Okay, but when the what, when the kid, thug or not, turned and ran away or tried to run away or tried to leave, that's where the situation changed. Now, yes. if 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 someone comes into your house or someone attacks you on the street and, and you're in fear for your life, you have a re- legal right to shoot them. Yes. But if they're going away from you, then that that danger to you no longer exists. Now, it sounds like to me that he the, they said the cop was treated for bruises and his face was swollen and so forth and so on. Sounds like to me that he might have hit the cop. Mm-hmm. The cop was furious. And then he tried to run away. And then the cops shot was shooting at him. Now, if he shot him in the back, that's a problem. Okay, and there were evidently over nine shots fired. Oh wow! I can't see any justification for nine nine shots being fired uh, in a residential area. You know that that yeah that seems that seems way excessive for us. And if the if the kid was running away or got his hands and and had his hands in the air, right. then that cop's in a lot of trouble. Well, if, if, whether if the cop's I, in a lot I, of I, trouble I, I, is another I, question. We seem to uh, it seems to be that the cops can get away with murder in a lot of cases. I wouldn't get my hopes. Well, I wouldn't no, call no, that no, murder. No, 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 it, it, well, it, it was murder if the guy was was going away from him. Well, okay, it, it, so murder. if it was a felony, uh, okay, so if you punch an officer, I'm pretty sure that they're going to call that a felony. Um, then you have if the fleeing. Being, if, then you have the fleeing if felon you're rule. you're being assaulted and you continue to attack the officer and the officer is in fear for his life or safety, then there's justification for him pulling well, the firearm. That's a justified and, and shooting. shooting. I, I got it. And I, I understand that's, where you're coming from, but you're kind of treating an officer like they're a regular individual. And I, I would like to point out that they're not. Um, they are the king's men and they have special rules for themselves. So assault on a Leo is different than assault on a regular individual. An assault, probably a first degree misdemeanor. Assault on a Leo, probably a low degree felony. If somebody commits a felony, then you have the right to shoot them um, if they're trying while they're you trying to the flee. 
no, the no, problem no, no, is no, no, is no, that no, I would say no. that they um, often employ this rule, and you don't know where these bullets go. You're just firing rounds in a residential neighborhood, and um, you know every one of those rounds went somewhere. And if they didn't go into this guy, they went someplace else. Well, you're right. Well, just because someone commits a felony doesn't give you right to shoot them. I agree. <laughs> well, I agree. Yeah. What? What? Oh, just to clarify, you, you, Scott, what he was saying was he used the word you, and I think it was confusing. What Mark was saying was the police have a rule that allows them to shoot somebody that they believe actually, is in the commission of a felony. You can. Um, no, a, 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 that's wrong. That's wrong. That is absolutely wrong. Is it? You cannot just shoot somebody. I can. There's a. There's a. Not a, a, you, a thousand uh, things. Mark. I've never heard that. Well, that people have the the right to do this. I've never heard that. I've only heard it as the police. Cops can't do it either. Cops can't do it either. Cops Please can't do it either. Okay. Well, that's well, interesting, no, 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 Scott. That's that's new to me. I've always heard I've, – I have to agree with Mark on this one. We've heard it's been called the fleeing felon rule. I mean, I wish they couldn't do it. I don't think they should be able to shoot somebody in the back, and I certainly agree with you that – You know, that in the in, in the midst of a they struggle, can. then it makes sense to use violence to defend yourself in that way. But at, like you said, if the guy's running away, the situation has changed. It should be de-escalation at that point and investigation to try to capture I'm not saying it's right. Suspect. I'm just saying there's a fleeing felon rule. Scott, thanks for the call, man. Do appreciate hearing from you tonight. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And I presume that fleeing felon rule is fairly common amongst the 50 states, but I don't know for sure. Maybe there are some states where it doesn't exist. Uh, so we don't know. We're not legal experts. But we are talk show hosts, and we'll take your calls at 855-450-FREE. <laughs> Let's continue. We've got Andre in Lynchburg listening to WLNI-FM. Hey, Andre. Good evening. How are you guys doing tonight? Welcome, sir. You're on the air. I appreciate it. Uh, two things. Number one, I, I think we can't um, consider that police officers, though they have a tough job, they can snap. They are human beings. They can lose their cool, lose their temper, and react wrongly throughout all of their training. And I know we have to wait for the results in this case. Andre, first. stand by. I don't want you to get drowned out by the music here. And we want to give you a chance to get your thoughts on in moments. And at this point, I should not give out the phone number because our phones are loaded up. If you're on the line, we're going to do our best to get you in here coming up. And, of course, we've always got seven nights a week of content here. So there's plenty of time for your thoughts, whether it's tonight or tomorrow. On Free Talk Live, there's more coming up. Lots of things change in life. Here's one thing that has it. For over 20 years, Lumber Liquidators has been the home of unbelievable flooring deals. And right now, those deals are even better. Take your pick of gorgeous pre-finished hardwoods like cherry, oak, and hickory, or an incredible 149 a square foot, plus loads of major hardwood flooring brands at a crazy 40% off. Even get great deals on laminate, bamboo, and vinyl floors. So go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. Special 12-month financing available. But hurry, the sale ends Tuesday. Hi, everyone. I'm Chuck Woolery. After putting a few thousand couples together on Love Connection, you know that nothing kills romance faster than bad breath. Smart Mouth gets at the cause of bad breath without the burn, and you get clean breath for about 12 hours. Other mouthwashes only prevent bad breath for about an hour. Gum and mints, well, they just cover it up. Use Smart Mouth in the morning for great breath all day. Rinse in the evening for clean, kissable breath all night. You can even wake up without morning breath. Smart Mouth, for 12 hours of real clean breath, look for the green box at your favorite store. Question, could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM-1 from Terragonics. Pro-EM-1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM-1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM-1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM-1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terragonics.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Or call toll-free, 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro EM1 from Terraganics. Life's getting better. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? 
liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Take control here in the remaining moments. If you're already on the line. If you're not, well... Not a good night for you to take control because we've got a lot of stuff here. A lot of folks want to talk and get on with their thoughts about Ferguson. Now remember, if you don't get in tonight, call tomorrow right out the, uh, the beginning of the show at 7 o'clock Eastern time. You'll be able to join Mark and whoever your co-hosts are tomorrow. Is it going to be Stephanie and Brian again, Mark? Yes. Right. Okay, cool. For the live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live, what's that you say? You don't get it on your local talk station? Well, you can contact your local talk station, talk to the program director, whoever he or she is, and ask them real nicely to get more Free Talk Live. And if you don't have any Free Talk Live, if you're listening online, you don't have any Free Talk Live on your local talk stations, then call and ask real nicely to get some, because we do this thing seven nights a week. You can join us online anytime you want at freetalklive.com. Let's jump right back into your calls and thoughts. Moses, listening in Santa Rosa, Florida, to Talk Radio 101. Hello, Moses. Yeah, I'm calling and asking, does anybody really know the history of the police, why the police were formed? Tell me about it. They were formed to catch runaway slaves. Yeah, that's what I was just saying actually earlier on the show this evening. Um, Sheriff's departments Sheriff's departments have existed for probably close to a thousand years, but police are a new phenomenon. Uh, 1850 was the uh, uh, it was, was about when they started. The first police department was in London, 1850. Most in, mostly in the United States, they had essentially slave hunters, runaway slave hunters, transitioned into this uh, municipal police department. There you go. Most. Always, okay, and it's always being stated that these young men are attacking these police in some type of way. And if I mean... I never see young men really try to be involved with the police at all. The majority of them that I see, they'd be trying to get away from the police. <laughs> yeah, there's no doubt. Moses, thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate it. Let's jump into Frank listening in Bozeman, Montana to KMMS. Hey, Frank. Yeah, I'm uh, under the I'm sorry? Boy, the, the, the young man had some kind of a knife or a sharp object and they cut the, the police officer up pretty bad where he was had this to be taken to the hospital where where was this i'm sorry in ferguson that's the first i've heard that the officer had that's been brand cut new. up i that's... never i never heard any more after that yeah that's the first i've heard of that i mean that's not to say that it's not true i i don't know um but that's the first i've heard that's of it anything else you want to share tonight frank 
That's it. That's Thanks for the call, man. Appreciate it. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Let's go to Brian. He's listening in Casper, Wyoming. Brian, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. Yeah, hi. Just one quick thing to share is for all the, the people, um, especially the black people out there, you know, the Mexicans, the people of other races, they really need to realize that, you know, the cops aren't just going after black people, Mexican people. They're coming after everybody. Um, let's take a look at what happened, and um, let's take let's 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 just take a look at what happened in New Mexico, right? They, a bunch of white cops shot a white homeless guy down. Yeah, that's right. And and yeah, and you guys probably remember the video of the. I know you guys aired it of that guy screaming for his daddy, who was yeah. actually a cop, while the cops were beating him down. So those people need to realize that this this isn't just about race. You know, everybody needs to just get together. You know, it doesn't matter what color you are. Well, I get where you're coming from. I mean, there's no doubt the police in general have uh, certainly a, a penchant for uh, for violence and escalation. And again, I'm not saying all police are the same. There are still some, you know, I think some good cops who are trying their best to in a terrible system. But generally, we see the police escalating conflicts. We see people of all races being uh, slaughtered and beaten and abused uh, by some of the police out there. And, and that's that's bad. But you also can't deny that there have been people who, let's say, black people, who have had encounters with police where the police themselves may actually say racist things, where the police themselves may display tendencies that likely would be displayed by a racist. I mean, you can't discount that. And, and stop and frisk is systemic and racist. I mean, and so you, when you still have things like this going on, it, it projects a message. Thanks, Brian. I appreciate your call tonight, trying to get as many folks in here as we can. David in San Francisco, you're on Free Talk Live. David. Oh, honey, yeah, a couple of different things. Uh, the popular myths that are going around about this. Uh, the first one is if you watch the press conference uh, from a couple of days ago, they make it very clear that this uh, so-called video of him strong-arming in the, uh, the uh, stop-and-go or whatever the name mm -hmm. of the store is, is not a verified him. And, and anybody that keeps uh, talking that, uh, is just stirring it up mm -hmm. because the, the police chief himself said that he did not want to release it because there was no verification of him, but that he was forced to release it uh, because of pressure from Freedom of Information Act. The thing of. is, I don't care if he, even if it was him, it still doesn't justify shooting a man over a box of oh, cigars. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Much less than, I mean, I'm really into this as divide and conquer schemes because I, I'm from St. Louis originally, and that town has always been a bad one. But the other thing, and this is in the sidewalk issue, that city is, is just right on the border of St. Louis itself. And when we lived out there, you know, we, the further out in the suburbs you were, the more likelihood you wouldn't have a sidewalk. But this, uh, this city has always been one where it's been, you know, the fat cats taking the money out of town. It's a slavery town, a conquered, you know, little borough that they never had sidewalks out there, even though it was right on the border. And, you know, right on the border of big old St. Louis City. And so the idea that they never provided sidewalks and then that this kid gets killed for not walking on the sidewalk. And in fact, I heard well, uh, one of your earlier callers saying that that's not the uh, alleged that's not the uh, the alleged claim. I mean, that's what the claim was is for why he was stopped in the first place. So are you saying there aren't right. sidewalks there or there were sidewalks? There, there were know. not. And as wait, a wait, wait, David, you don't know what street it was. Did you re research the street? Because there was a guy who called earlier saying he researched the street, and he said there were sidewalks on this street. If you l just listen to the press conference from a couple of days ago with the police chief, and they clearly say that the cop uh, 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 pulled him over because he was walking in the street, yep. and the witness says, and, and uh, the cop actually, uh, the cop's testimony is is that he pulled him over for, not, for walking in the sidewalk, and they said that they were just almost there to, the, to where they were going, so they had to be in the sidewalk, or, you know, in the street. And it, it's not, you got to realize that this town is like uh, Poe Dunkett uh, of... <laughs> 
they, they've never had sidewalks in that town. David, and thanks it, for the call, it, man. I do appreciate uh, your call and thoughts here tonight. Interesting claim. So one guy calls in earlier to claim he's researched the exact street where Big it's wide happened. wide sidewalks. And there's huge uh, you know, like government sidewalks there, and now uh, David says he grew up there and there's no sidewalks. So let's go uh, and continue with your calls and thoughts. We've got Ken. He's in Mobile. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Ken. Hey. I was just wondering. Um, I'm a professor in criminology. And long time, just about to retire, and I also am a retired police officer, and I'm trying to figure out where you got the slave hunters, runaway slave hunters, or all that police's lineage is, and all that crap. That, that's totally unsubstantiated, and I well, wish you would give it to me. me. Where you tell, me where, tell me where police come from, then. Police officers are mostly derived from the English that came over, or the Scottish, actually, there's more Scottish police officers anyway than anybody. Oh, good old Irish and Scottish. They're not well, derived from I'm, that. I'm not talking I mean, about, I'm not t- talking about where I they're from. The first, the first police department was in London in 1850, right? Yeah. 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 That much is true. Okay, so we know that uh, chronologically all police departments came after 1850. Okay. Um, do you agree or disagree with the statement that many people that were employed to hunt slaves in the South then were transitioned from the 1850s, 1860s, 1870s into municipal police departments. Is that a a statement you agree or disagree with? I totally disagree. Okay. I'm still trying. I've I've read just thousands and thousands of books on the history of law enforcement and history of other organizations, and I have never, ever heard of that. I've, I've read it in a couple of places. That doesn't make it right. It just means something I've read in a couple of places. Well, there you okay. go now. Ken's that, saying different. Ken, thanks that, for your call, right. man. We'll have to have somebody else take a closer look at it. We don't have time to dig in deep tonight. We've got time maybe to get Anthony with his thoughts in Charleston. Anthony, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hey, man. Uh, as far as the Scottish police thing, uh, the guy just said, um, you know, Watch Braveheart, you know. I mean, white people have been fighting for their rights for a long fucking time. Oh, you can't say those things on the radio. We're just going to have to drop you off when you do those things. And there you go. So (laughs) wrapping up the show with the F-bomb. Boom! (laughs) I don't even know what he was trying to say. And we're out of time, so we can't figure it out now. We'll see you tomorrow online in the meantime at freetalklive.com See you then. Have a great weekend. A meme is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't tread on meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't Tread on Meme, M-E-M-E, helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value, and they look neat too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't Tread on Meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy-to-use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at DontTreadOnMeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't Tread on Meme, your path to a voluntary society with honest money. DontTreadOnMeme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. 35% of U.S. credit accounts are facing collection agencies. Of that 35, almost 40% are the result of medical bills. Before uninsured friends or family go in for medical treatment, send them to asiarunlikehellguide.com. No computer tracing, no tracking cookies. They will not go on a list. Privacy matters. Just tell us what you need. Get a quote. Fractions of U.S. prices. asiarunlikehellguide.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer.
You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Off the Air Live is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Kane and the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, August 16th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.57 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,305 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $505. Antiwar.com reports images of camouflaged U.S. police wielding military-grade equipment and armored vehicles cracking down on public protest on the streets of Ferguson, Missouri, have become an enduring image in the minds of Americans and have finally brought attention to years of militarization of U.S. civilian police forces. Growing concern has finally caught the notice of the Senate Armed Services Committee and the chairman, Senator Carl Levin from Michigan, says that the Pentagon's policy of arming police will be reviewed before the next military spending bill is passed. Levin says, Congress established this program out of real concern that local law enforcement agencies were literally outgunned by drug criminals, referring to the 1033 program. Drug war hysteria was the nominal pretext for the 1033, the Department of Defense Excess Property Program, which was passed in 1993 to provide surplus Pentagon equipment to law enforcement across the country. Under the law, the weapons are only supposed to be used for counter-drug investigations and activities, though for years the Pentagon has been giving tanks, armored vehicles, grenade launchers, and everything else to small-town American police, which have turned themselves into miniaturized militaries. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your precious